Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode number 533, featuring another look at the game Stellars, this time uh, focusing on the Machine Age, the eighth major expansion in this series. Now, if you've been watching Matt Chat for a long time, you know I covered this game uh, back in episode 341, which was eight years ago. And there's been, obviously, lots of expansions uh, since I did that, and I thought, since it's one of my favorite games and I spent so much time playing it, uh, let's take a look at this, uh, this new content not just the Machine Age, but a lot of the DLCs that came up uh, between the, that episode and this episode. And I think they've all just made the game, I mean, I already liked it to begin with, but now it is truly fantastic. Definitely something you should take a look at, and I think you'll uh, agree <laughs> after you watch this video. Uh, anyway, uh, you can get this expansion uh, for $24.99 over at Steam, and there's some various packages and deals and subscriptions you can buy if you want all the expansions and some bundles. You know, so you don't end up paying a full price. But at any price, I think it's a great deal. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Stellaris the Machine Age. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me ask you something. Have you ever wanted to conquer the universe? <laughs> I mean, why stop with America when you could command the cosmos? Well, that's a question that keeps me up at night. <laughs> uh, really, what I'm here today to talk about is a game called Stellaris, one of my favorite games, as you can see. I've clocked in an impressive 1,246.2 hours. So... Hopefully I know a little something about a little something when it comes to this game. I guess you'll see. Uh, I have covered the game before, uh, but that was way back. I don't even remember when. And it was well before they had all the uh, uh, DLC. And the one that I'm really going to be focusing in here on today is called The Machine Age. It came out back in May, and it's it's kind of gotten me st <laughs> so stuck into it. <laughs> you know, I've been playing it kind of obsessively ever since I got this sucker installed. Uh, there's a lot to say we'll get into in the video, uh, but if you're brand new uh, to the game, you don't necessarily need all these expansions, but I, I think it just, I think they all, you know, serve a place. You could debate some of them. Uh, there's some debate about whether they add to, or maybe you just play it once and then don't use it for every playthrough. Uh, we're just going to go whole hog here uh, with all the DLCs in a freaking huge universe, because that's the way to play it. A huge <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so let's jump in. Let me close this out and then we'll open up the game. And there we go. I had to get it in the window. This will be a little bit weird because I have this big honking monitor. It's like as big as Texas, really wide, which is great for this game because it really makes it just amazing to look at. Uh, but you could play it, you know, 1920 by 1080. Not recommended, but what can you do sometimes? <laughs> it's got, we got to accommodate the YouTubes, uh, but we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, let me just verify that we do, in fact, have all the content. Yeah, it looks like everything is, uh, well, it says it's owned, but is it uh, installed? Let's see. Uh, I think it, maybe we'll have to uh, start the game before that kicks in. So let's go ahead and do a new game. Uh, and again, I'm going to, well, maybe I shouldn't assume you've ever played this before. <laughs> if it's your first time, uh, you probably want to go with this first option here, United Nations of Earth. Uh, I hate uh, the United Nations of Earth because they they do this thing where they try to make all these alliances and federation, kind of like Star Trek. And that just, that just kind of interferes with my plundering and conquering. <laughs> uh, I don't like to have friends. I just want to conquer everybody. Uh, so I typically go with the Commonwealth of Man. Uh, second option here, which is a military dictatorship. You know, those are great as long as you're the military dictator, right? Uh, not so pleasant to serve under, them, but anyway. Uh, uh, we could tweak this a little bit. Let's see about the uh, some of the new options here. If you wanted to jump straight into that DLC content. What's that? Okay. I 
think there's a couple here that are new to the uh, tell us that. I don't know if we can see which ones are new, but I'm pretty sure there's a couple that have new origins. These guys have been around for a while. I've always been curious about some of these other options, but I just I'm stuck on I'm stuck on humans. I know they <laughs> I've seen even the, the developer of this game complain like why do people pick humans? They're boring. We have all these other options. Look, you could be playing as this guy. <laughs> it's a little like is it Garrus? Uh, Kalazan Anthropoids. But anyway, lots and lots of options. My god. Some of these are very diverse. I mean, totally would change the way you play the game. Like, I've, I've tinkered around with these guys a little bit. The temperate homologs. They kind of remind me of the Borg. You know them from TNG. And if you don't know who the Borg are, turn off this channel! I don't want you here! My god, I gotta have some standards for you, uh, Matt Chatters out there. Okay, let's go uh, with these. Now I can edit this, and one of the things we could do, since you know I played this a hundred thousand times, uh, I've seen all the sort of beginner quest stuff, beginner stories. Uh, there's not a whole lot of story uh, for these guys. Uh, uh, they come here, they go through a wormhole, they pop out the other side of the wormhole. Stuff happens. <laughs> it's kind of vague. Uh, but we could switch that. Yeah, I think Lost Colony is what they start with normally. Uh, but we could skip that and go to like the Arc Welders, which is new to this game. And really cool uh, new tech stuff you can do with engineering. Now, a lot of this uh, DLC is about either cyborgs or synths, so you can sort of put your body into the uh, an android body, uh, so you can live forever. Pretty cool. I like the way the I don't want I don't know how much of the story I want to spoil <coughs> here because it's kind of fun. But one of the nice things about this game is you always have choices you can make. Uh, so you can just you, you could play Cybernetic Creed two or three times, make different choices along the way, and still have a lot of fun. But it doesn't get repetitive. Uh, but I'm just I think I'll save that uh, for you if you buy the expansion. You might want to see some of those stories play out. I'll just go with the default. Uh, we're going to see, hopefully, some of the new stuff as we play along. Interesting thing about this expansion is a lot of the new content of the DLC you don't even see until about mid-game. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, a pretty good reason. Uh, I like the fact that they focus on that sort of mid and late game experience. Kind of bump that up a little bit, make it more interesting. Because that does tend to be where a game like this can kind of lag. You know, especially if you're playing a huge map. You know, you always want something to be looking forward to, some new text to explore. Uh, anyway, let's just stick to what I know best, which is the uh, these guys. Now, you can go huge, large, medium, small. Uh, I don't know why. Unless you've got a really crappy PC, uh, you might want one of these other options because it might you know, impact your uh, performance. But uh, I've installed some pretty kick-ass uh, gra <laughs> graphics cards and stuff in uh, my gaming rig here. So we're going to go huge, huge! I wish there was an option that was like even more huge, like, like huger. Because <laughs> a thousand stars just ain't enough. I never mess with any of these other options. Uh, maybe I should at some point. If there's something that really bothers you, you might change it. Uh, let's see, Hell Gates. Yeah. yeah. Now the Iron Mode, Iron Man Mode, is kind of important for this game. I normally don't like an Iron Man Mode. It's kind of for the the old gruff, tough guys, you know. But you really need it on for this game. Uh, again. It, if you crash and burn, your your empire fails, you, you get conquered, you know, you have a bad bad luck. Big deal. You know, just restart. It'll be fun. <laughs> Not that big a deal. Sometimes it's actually more fun to play uh, when you really get dealt a bad hand and everything's going to hell. You know, see if there's is there some way I can salvage this and make a comeback. You know, I've had lots of games like that. Uh, so I just like playing with Iron Man mode. Plus that avoids the temptation to save scum. It kind of makes things for you final kind of forces you but the most important thing is it's eligible for achievements if i turn that sucker off i don't get any achievements i don't get any bragging rights i don't have anything to show anybody 
it was just me. Look at me, I say the scum. <laughs> so, I leave that on. Plus, it's got a mean looking gauntlet. Ah! I can play. Start the new game. It's always exciting to start these things. You never know what you're going to have, what kind of resources. You know, wait, here I'm playing on the right difficulty. Didn't even check that. Ah. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have this set on the normal difficulty. Now let's go back up. No. I'll just start over with that because I really want to make sure I'm not on cadet mode. Because <laughs> I am not a cadet. Right, let's select. Somewhere here there is a difficulty. Where is it? Iron Man mode is on. But... Instant. Oh, look at this. Wesley Christian. The AI has no inherent economic, scientific, or military advantages over the player. Now that's probably what you want. You're going to get plenty of challenge. I mean, it certainly challenges me, especially at the start of the game. You might want one of these other options, though, like Captain, or, you know, it doesn't hurt to give the AI a little boost. So what tends to happen is you, you start off, it's really competitive and challenging, uh, but then you get to sort of a point where it's obvious you're going to win. Uh, so maybe some of these other options might make the late game more interesting, but I'd be more scared that it's just going to make the early game impossible. Uh, so I'll just stick with Ensign. Oh, what the hell. <laughs> I'm just feeling kind of like this today. It says slight bonuses to eco economy, research, and naval capacity. You know what? Let's go Captain. I've never done it before. I'll probably lose. That might be fun for you to see. <laughs> We shall see. I wonder if it's like Civ. You know, you got some of those more. Was it Prince King? Yeah, it's a little bit more of a, an achievement if you compete at all these higher levels. Okay, yeah, last colony. Uh, they came through with this great arc ship. Uh, what was that show that had the big arc ship? Chrysanthemum. Is that a Netflix thing? No, 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 Amazon Prime. Oh, come on, I'm blanking on uh, the show. <laughs> it's like the, uh, the, the Mormons had a big ark ship <laughs> uh, they sent through. Let's see what else. They, I guess it, in that case it got commandeered. But anyway, I, dig, I digress. So I think what, if I recall correctly, I never read this. <laughs> yeah, so the, I guess we started off on Earth with this wormhole. They sent this big ark ship through, a couple of these arcs. Uh, now we're we sort of pop back up. We've um, built up our technology again. Yeah, the new world has been tamed. Numbers grew. Last few decades have been um, great leaps in technology. So now we're trying to explore. We want to find what happened to that other arc ship that came through the wormhole. Kind of your origin story there. Okay, and then we've got to make some early decisions. Lots to do. Uh, and again, I'm not saying I've got like the best possible strategy here. I've beaten the game several times, but you know, there's probably somebody that can do this better than me. But what I like to do is start <laughs> uh, stick that construction ship here on the one of these mineral resources because you need these minerals in order to build anything, including space stations. It's just you never have enough. It feels like uh, so I always like to have a lot of minerals. Start building up those resources early. Uh, of course, it's also tempting to jump straight into science. It's got this little cog here. Uh, oh, God, there's so much shit this game. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we can set him up there. And then we also have a science ship. <clears throat> we want this guy to go around and start exploring for us. Now, you'll notice uh, I could go in three different directions. I'm not going to be able to explore everything all at once. But uh, you might want to prioritize this planet for this system. Because it's got a continental world on it, and that's where the humans look to be in the continental worlds. But you got to survey it before you can send a construction ship out there to build a star base on it and put a colony on it. Uh, so I like to go ahead and get that uh, process started. Then I can pick my initial research, and all you know, this is where it gets so painful sometimes because you need everything, and you're just like, oh. I this is good because I need more money. Energies, energy and money are basically the same thing in this game at this point. I think there used to be used to be different you know, early stages of the game, but 
obviously a blue laser would be good. And you really don't want to wait too long to start building up your, your fleet because the computer's out there. He can show up with a huge fleet, pull it right out of his butt. Uh, next thing you know, you got your <laughs> conquered right away. So that's kind of tempting, but I, I like to go anything that gives me a little research bonus. Hopefully, I am not going to be attacked right away. So we'll have a little bit of time. I'm fingers crossed to build things up. Uh, okay, here's a lot of good options. Uh, so naval capacity, uh, you can see up there in the right corner, we have a little ship, 3 out of 20 on it. Basically, this is how many ships I can have total across all my fleets uh, before I start having to basically pay a tax. <laughs> and that uh, gets really expensive in a hurry. Uh, 20 is fine for right now, I feel. Uh, but that's just something to keep an eye on. Uh, one other thing I don't like about this is it's just a hard number, plus 25. You know, I like them much better when it's like 5% more, because that scales better than this. You know, plus 25 naval capacity is not going to mean crap later in the game. Uh, but there are iterations of this, so you get one, two, three, four that will add more. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't think that's the best choice for the first one. Uh, food is important, and we've got two things here related to food. Basically, without food, you people do a little thing called starve, which is <laughs> uh, not cool. Uh, but... If you play the game as long as I have, you know that there's a, a pretty cool thing you can do uh, with farms later called nutritional plenitude, where you basically give everybody, uh, you put golden corrals on every planet and give everybody a free pass, <laughs> a free season ticket to it. Uh, so they have lots of babies, I guess. Uh, population growth goes way up. Uh, so you don't want to just ignore these because you, I think there's two or three you have to have before you get that, what they call an edict. Uh, to be able to do that but uh, i think the, this one here is probably better for me at this point because i have i don't have uh, uh the hydroponics bay is better if you have a lot of stations you can put the bays on it but i only got the one station right now uh, however uh, hydroponic farms can suck uh, well i should say unless you have a dedicated planet just for agri agriculture i think i'm just going to pick the third option though because i've already got some farmers working for me and this will pump them up 20%, make them better farmers. Put those suckers, give them some miracle grow. Get those GMOs working for you. All right, the third option. Yeah, I mean, see what I mean? You got, you don't just have one measly stinking tech thing you're working on. You got three huge trees and a card system. And there's some fun randomization that happens here. Uh, let's see. Uh, frigates. Uh, you know, they, these basically lead to torpedo. Uh, style ships, frigates, and later cruisers. You put torpedoes on, you can make them invisible, go around stealthily, and do things for you. They're not my favorite ship. I typically hold off on that one. Uh, then we've got one for Corvette hole points and frigate hole points. Uh, so these are really cool because you get a lot of Corvettes and frigates, pretty much, especially the Corvettes, you keep those throughout the game. And this is just a free, well, you know, once you research it. They all get 10%, so you don't have to add any new armor or anything to it. Uh, so that's a really good option. <clears throat> uh, but again, I like to go to infrastructure first. So here we're going to get minerals, 20%. And then uh, there's certain kinds of things you can put on star base that also get minerals. So that's a good thing. Uh, so we're looking pretty good for uh, food and minerals. And then let's take a look here at our planet. There's not going to be much we can do at this point. Uh, so every planet you have... Uh, districts and these districts do different things obviously uh, this one is basically more housing so people don't get <laughs> out on the street uh, so plus five housing which is cool uh, the downside of 500 minerals to build this cost two uh, energies to uh, maintain it but you only get a clerk and clerks are kind of sucky uh, all they do is a little bit of trade a little bit of amenities you, you typically don't want a whole bunch of clerks on a planet uh, see, uh, but however, uh, the big thing about this option is it gives you another building slot. Uh, so that's here. You see, every planet has a hard cap on how many you can have. What is this? Ten? One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I could do some addition. Uh, Twelve uh, building slots total. Uh, so you might need to put a couple of city districts just to get that full spectrum. But again, yeah, not not something urgent at this point. I got two slots here. I can't even do anything with. And even uh, these other districts, I'll need some more minerals than I have now. 
looks like it's 300 for most except for the industrial one. Uh, so basically what I like to do is try to get this uh, this one built, the mining district, pretty early as soon as we can get that working because again without minerals you can't build anything. Uh, but the next one will probably be either this one for industry or this one for uh, generators. Generators give you technicians, again money is kind of the same thing as energy in this game so that's you know 16 uh, energy coming I'll just I'm always I think gold in my head which you get 16.6 gold there and once you get that uh, filled out with people and this one will give us 11 minerals and then I guess that 20% later uh, so those are pretty good options but the industrial one this one's a bit more complicated so uh, since this is our capital there's not much we can do with this but once we get some different planets you can make the planet just produce one or the other so you could say I don't want the artisans who make commercial goods I just want the metallurgists so they can make more metal for my for alloys uh, for basically making more ships uh, so you can specialize that way but the nice thing about this capital is that it gives you a resources from jobs bonus of 10% so that's across the board and if you really want to get good at this game I think you really have to start focusing in on okay where are my bonuses at I really want to you know, focus my capital focus my <laughs> building and put my people where they're gonna get <clears throat> the most bang for the buck so you know, for the Empire capital is kind of settled for you you really can't go wrong you know, everything's gonna get that 10% bonus okay enough about that we obviously can't do anything right now Minerals. <laughs> And then I think that's probably all we need to think about at this stage. I think I left anything out. Oh, I got some up. <laughs> you thought I was done. No. Now you also have this sort of role-playing game element to this game uh, called Leaders, uh, which is really super neat. Uh, there's lots of ways you can specialize and tailor these, uh, uh, these leaders, and they have very different functions. It's just a really cool thing. If you're a micromanager, <laughs> oh, this is going to be your crack cocaine, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, the Grand Marshal, let's take a look here at our council. Uh, so you get, I guess, uh, three council members, or council members. Uh, four council members starting off, and I think we can expand this, at least uh, put a couple of additional ones on later. But if you play this right, uh, uh, these leaders will have different uh, traits, they call them. And some of the traits are called uh, uh, leader traits, I guess. That's what they call these. And you have but they do empire-wide effects if, big if here, if you're on the council. So but I, like, <clears throat> what you want to do is kind of have some different kinds of leaders and be planning ahead, thinking, well, this, you know, she's not going to last forever. She's 26, so once she gets to 80, she'll probably die. That's kind of a random chance to that. Uh, probably won't die until she gets to 80. Things can happen. So you're probably safe right now, but I like to have a couple up-and-comers, you know, the next generation leaders, and I might put some of these uh, empire-wide traits on them just in case that when the inevitable happens, I can swap them in and my empire won't suffer with any loss of bonuses. Uh, but anyway, it'd be really, really nice looking on these counselor, <coughs> counselor traits to everybody on the council. Uh, so for example here, I wouldn't want to pick this because she's not going to be leading a fleet. She's basically the dictator <laughs> ruling from unity. So this would be useless uh, to give her. Uh, but these other two are probably both equally good. Let's see. 7% more ships, uh, weapon damage, army damage. And again, this is across my whole empire, these bonuses. Now, I don't think you're going to beat the sublight speed 10%. Oh, my God. <laughs> so necessary. Pick it. There we go. Uh, Sydney Beauclair, Beauclair, Sydney Beauclair. Okay, and then we have a, another level we can do. Let's go ahead and just keep doubling down on that skirmish here. I like fast ships. I don't know. I don't like waiting. I want something. I want stuff. Oh! <laughs> Wait, okay, so she's got. All right. Oh, this guy's also got skirmisher. Holy cow. Man, we're going to be zipping. Oh, but now we get. Now this one's a little more complicated because this guy, Minister of Defense, he is the he can lead a fleet. Uh, so you might want to think about, you know, you know, you want your fleet to be powerful, especially at this point. Uh, 
Now you notice he's got military and army effects uh, with this trait, so he gets 5% uh, orbital bombardment pop damage, so basically if you need to take some army down from a planet before you invade it, uh, you'll, you won't damage the planet so bad, so when you do take it, it kind of sucks when you basically devastate a planet and take it over, but everything's rubble. That's kind of stupid. Uh, so this would mitigate that, plus he's got an army effect, so when you do, you, you could swip, switch this guy out of the fleet, put him onto the troop transports, he becomes a general at that point, uh, and then he would have some advantages for the army. Uh, so again, carefulness, basically trying to take your time, conquering a planet, <laughs> uh, be selective, be careful, laser sights, what do they call that, precision bombing. But we also have one. This is tough for me because I think it's a choice between these top two. Uh, one, even more speed. Wow, that'd be awesome. Or all of my leaders get a 5% leader experience gain. Uh, all those, really, both these very good, but I think I just got to keep doubling down on the, on the speed because <laughs> the faster we can zip, and the more we can do, especially with that computer out there, uh, and then we can be the regenerate. give them regeneration for the fleet. So basically, instead of having to go back to Starbase to get repairs, you can just do it out in the field. I don't really find that all that useful. So I'm gonna go with the second option, politician. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> just keep stacking on those counselor. Right, so council agenda speed. That's what this is here. Uh, again. You could specialize in this, get really fixated on it. It's just kind of a little extra thing. Uh, but your council will be working on these things they call agendas, and as they're being uh, completed, you get a little bonus. So this makes my citizen population 4% happier. <laughs> and then when I launch it, uh, then they get 10% that will last a while. And then while that's launched, I can start on another agenda. Some cooldowns from that. It's somewhat complicated. It's just a little perk. Uh, and then this screen over here is where we can have policies and edicts. And a lot of this is just set up by default. I typically don't mess with it. It depends, I guess, on how you want to play. We'll come back to this later. But you notice I have an edict here I could turn on when I get more unity. It's another one of the currencies that builds up resources, I guess. Uh, this will give me a Starbase upgrade speed of 50%. So when it gets more tech and I can upgrade star bases and that can take a long 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 time so I can click this and activate it and I get two more star bases I can put I'm not a big fan of star bases <laughs> some people play that way they turtle up try to protect their empire I like to protect my empire by killing everybody else this thing up here is called the edicts fund so I got a basically this little slush fund here so up to 40 I get for free, so I could turn this on, it's not really going to help me at this point in any way, but uh, pretty sure that doesn't, I wonder the star base upgrade speed, I wonder if that includes the little bases that you put on planets. Now oh, these are called stations, right? Yeah, this is the star base, just making sure I got my <laughs> vocabulary right. What the heck? It doesn't cost anything. Let's just go ahead and turn it on and see what you see. Oh, we can't turn it on now, but uh, a little bit later, maybe we can verify. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool if it helped you to build your basis worker. You know, I've played all these thousands of hours and there's still stuff that I'm not quite sure about. Alright, I think we're good to go. Okay, so I'm going to unpause. And we can sit back and wait. Probably get the bus and speed up time, but typically there's so much new sit rep. Are you, know, you gonna? You might even want to play it at a slower speed. Uh, I like to play at normal speed and just constantly hit the space bar to pause. I can't imagine playing this in multiplayer mode. I can't pause. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be tough. Okay, yeah, a little bit more about our lost colony. Uh, the chrysanthemum. Stabilized and vanished. So we're going to try to find it, figure out what happened to those people. New sit rep. Story. 
That's the, maybe I should have picked one of those other origins. And I wouldn't be planning about that. <laughs> okay, there goes uh, Stephanie Mueller. She's our head of research. Now, there is a risk factor. You know, these scientists uh, can get killed pretty easily. And it really sucks if it's a very high level uh, scientist plus your head of research. I mean, this can be a catastrophe sometimes. So there's always a risk factor. Construction complete. You can even change the voices if you don't like the, uh, this lady, but I really like the, I think she's called the soldier. I just, I like the way she sounds, always been her. But there's a lot of other options. Okay, so they got that, uh, you know, I felt like I got blinders on with this <laughs> resolution. Okay, so he's built one on, the, he got that mineral one built. Now the question is, do we want to go for a little bit extra cash, for a little extra research? Uh, I'm going to have to go with, oh, we need 16 more. Uh, so we have to wait for that to catch up. We're only bringing in 28 minerals. Or I guess uh, 30 minerals at this point. Now the big thing you have to wait on is this thing called influence. I hate this thing. This is the scourge of my existence. Uh, you only get three, and sometimes this even goes down depending on what's happening. It's really hard, especially early on, to get this to improve. Uh, there's various ways to get more influence. Uh, none of them are easy. Uh, one is to build up your fleet, and then you get this thing called power projection. And there's some math involved in this, but basically the, uh, you want a, the a biggest fleet, a, the biggest fleet you could possibly have, <laughs> and then you'll get a little bit more uh, influence from just the sheer size of you know, how powerful your fleet is, I suppose. Uh, and uh, there's some uh, things called civics. We'll get in. Yeah, civics. And then there's uh, some, one of these called traditions to give you a little bit more. Uh, very late in the game, it really opens up and you can pick some uh, what they call unity ambitions. And then you can finally start to get some influence. Uh, in other ways, you can conquer people, make them into vassals and get some influence uh, from that. Uh, but really, that's going to be... Well, there's a couple other things we can talk about. That's going to be the big thing to keep an eye on. Because, uh, you know, once you run out of this, you can't build more star bases. You just have to sit there and wait for this thing to slowly build. And, and also, when we get into war, you'll see it's, it's important there with uh, what you can conquer and claim. Uh, until a little bit later, there's ways to sort of mitigate the impact of that. Okay, so he's up there exploring. We've got this guy building. Uh, then we have this fleet just sitting here, and you might say, well, maybe I should send this fleet out, do a little patrol. Well, you could, but the thing is, as long as he's sitting here, he gets this, uh, we got a little thing on our star base called crew quarters, so you can see it takes 25% off the dock ships, the upkeep. So basically what that means is if I send this fleet out to do stuff, probably won't have much of an impact because it's only, I think, three ships. <laughs> so we're not going to make a huge difference. We could use this guy to kind of explore around a little bit, uh, but it's going to cost us more. So it might be better just to keep him docked. Now the one problem with that is you got a commander here, a leader just kind of sitting here. And I don't think he gets much experience points, you know, just to sit in base. He's going to get some because he's on the council. So he's got that going for him. Hopefully we'll get another planet here pretty soon and we can make him govern that just for something to do instead of just sitting there. Okay. Now, we can build a science ship. But to do anything with that science ship, we'll need another leader. Uh, so this is where this screen comes in. And you see uh, officials, who basically are the best people you can have to govern planets, govern systems. There's a lot of perks associated with that. Also good. Uh, you put some on the council, depending on what council seats you make available. Commanders, you know, you've already seen those, ships and armies, and then they can also be governors, uh, and then the scientists, you can have up to three scientists. Now, if we hire somebody, uh, we're going to have to pay unity for that. We'll talk about how you get more unity here in a second. But if we go over the three, it's fine. It'll let you do that, but you'll lose experience. So right now, they get full XP. If you put if I put four on there, I think it's like a 10 to 13 percent hit they're going to take. So not, you know, it's still okay. You can manage that. 
Uh, but you could get to a point where you're getting no experience because you have so many leaders. Uh, maybe late, late in the game, it's irrelevant really. Maybe you've already got most of people maxed out level-wise, so it might not make any difference. But it'd make a huge difference at this point, so you really wouldn't want to go over to three, uh, in my opinion. But we've got uh, another two scientists we could hire. Uh, so let's see, is that even be possible? Let's say we wanted to hire another scientist. Now we need a uh, hundred unity to hire another scientist. For right now, we got sixty-five. So we got a little time. Now we can just let that build up. Uh, but then we can build a science ship, and then we'll have two uh, explorers out there. And that's going to be great for us because these guys will find uh, what are called anomalies, which are little sub quests or side quests, whatever, however you want to think about it. Now, uh, those can have some really nice rewards, make your systems more valuable. A lot of times, if something will happen, they'll see an asteroid, strange signal, something like that, study it, and say, oh, we could put three more uh, minerals on this planet, or two more engineering science. Uh, boom. Sometimes you even get new ships. It's incredible. Construction things complete. Right, he has that, so we got that. Oops. Looks like we've got one more. We could just do a little shortcut like that, and then he will pop in there, and then we'll get this gas giant to engineering research. Okay, let's check our society management. So we've got 11 months until this kicks in, and this, again, I know it's a very complicated game, so this is sort of similar to technology. You, know, you do the research, you get new techs. Uh, basically, this is a series of bonuses. Depending on your play style, what your goals are, you're going to pick different ones. And there's always interesting choices to make. Uh, but it's powered by this thing called Unity. So I got 300 Unity coming in per per, uh, per month. And it's going to take 11 months at that rate. So maybe I could pump up and figure out a way to get more uh, Unity coming in. That would speed this up. <sighs> Which brings me to what's going to become a problem later. Is <laughs> if Empire gets... You know, they have this thing called uh, Empire Sides. So to kind of balance the game, uh, the bigger your empire gets, the more systems, the more people, uh, everything's going to start to slow down. So you'll need more research to make technologies faster. The same thing with the Unity. You know, instead of taking 11 months, like right now I've only got the one planet, so this is moving at a rapid clip. Once I add two or three more planets, uh, things are going to start taking a lot longer. But I'll have more planets, so I can put more stuff on them that makes more unity. So it's not really as bad as you might think, but you always have to be thinking about how rapidly your empire is expanding. Uh, sometimes it makes sense just to kind of slow down, let things catch up, don't get overextended. It's been the bane of many of my games to get overextended, get too much, conquer too much too fast, and then find you can't hold it. Got our hundred. How much do we need? I'm missing here. Can I hire this sign? I guess I can. I don't know why that's red. Glitch. Looks like we're close to being able to have another scientist in the next part of the ship. That'll take 60 days to make these signs. Oh, there's a lot more in this game. We haven't even scratched the surface. We're at the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Look at this story. If you like science fiction, you're going to love this game. It's uh, got pretty much every science fiction novel, story, Star Trek episode. <laughs> uh, you know, everything you could imagine from any kind of science fiction series is in this game somewhere, in some form or another. Uh, there's even mods you can get to make it specifically about Star Trek. About one. Is there Babylon 5 one? I don't know. I don't play with those. There should be. Maybe there's a firefly. And what is the name of the... The Expanse! Yes, that's what I was trying to think of. Okay, we got Mysterious Ruins. Tagara 3 contains the remains of an ancient abandoned colony. From orbit, there are no obvious signs of disaster, which could have killed the inhabitants or compelled them to flee. If you want answers, an expedition to the surface would be required. Okay, so this will trigger archaeological site. <laughs> Okay, let's look at this other one. 
You have to make sure you're paused as you're reading, because it really sucks that you get tied into this. <laughs> oh my, I didn't even see that guy coming over there and conquered my planet while I was reading the text. Normal, I think it's supposed to automatically pause, but I don't know if it's me, user error, or whatever, but sometimes it's, uh, I forget to, uh, somehow it gets unpaused. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Unity. Right, because we brought all the uh, stuff with us from Earth back in the day. And this amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. You know, that's something that I always love thinking about. I think about this a lot. Like, what would it be like if we discovered for sure? You know, so there was just no doubt that, like, okay, we have discovered alien life, and maybe there's some plants on somewhere, or maybe it's something more dramatic. <laughs> well, there's a Dyson sphere. Or well, we've got a signal that's definitely an intelligent uh, civilization out there, beeping uh, Morse code or whatever. You know, how would that change? You know, what, would that just be sort of a kind of a hot topic for a week and then we'd be moving on to other things? <laughs> or would it cause a panic, you know, religious upheavals? I mean, I don't know. It's just fun to think about. You know, this game kind of helps you explore some of the possibilities, I suppose. Uh, and since we're xenophobic, though, <laughs> our empire, <laughs> we don't like it. <laughs> oh my god, there's other people out there? Ooh. Remnants. Contact report. <laughs> With some apprehension. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just freak geological formation. It's just results of curious natural phenomena. <laughs> yeah, you just go ahead and take that. We got our new science ship. So we can stick us. Uh, now here, if you're not satisfied what you got already, uh, we could we can't swap out the Grand Marshal because this is the dictator. <laughs> swap them out. But you notice we've got our uh, head of research here, level one. Uh, she doesn't have any council traits. Yeah, there's nothing there to help her out like these other ones do, so it'll be fine. Let me show you what I want to do here. I'm going to get this guy, Miroslav. He's 40. Pop him in there. So this will put another drain on our precious food. Uh, but then I can go back into my government and swap her out for this guy. And then he's going to add 2% per skill level. Another reason I want these guys to keep leveling up, not get stagnant. So when he gets to be level 2, see, that'll be 4%, 3 and then it goes all the way up to 10 there. There's even ways to go beyond 10. Uh, but that, even at a, a couple levels in, this is going to get to be significant. It might not sound like a lot at this point. Uh, but it all adds up. It's, it's about the small bonuses and really trying to leverage every little bit of juice you can get. Alright, let's have this guy. Since that guy's up there, let's have him down there. It's always it's true. good, I think, to explore the immediate area around your base first before you start going way out. <laughs> now you'll see why in a minute. Okay, what about this archaeological site? Uh, so we're going to have archaeology, archaeological sites and then astral rifts, which is another one of the DLCs you could purchase. Basically, these are just little quests, uh, storylines, if you will. Uh, so there'll be things that happen, and you learn more about the story. Uh, you'll get bonuses along the way. Uh, and then at the end, you might get something really incredible. Uh, you might find this ancient relic that has just a huge impact on your whole uh, empire. Uh, sometimes bad things happen, <laughs> so yeah, you never really know. There's, there's some randomness associated with it. And then, uh, I don't know if it's so much with this one, but with the Astral Rifts, uh, you'll get lots of choices you can make as it unfolds. Uh, so that makes, makes that a little more interesting. Uh, and you can see there's some RPG mechanics here. Uh, you can't specialize a scientist to be really good at archaeology or really good at Astral Rifts. But I don't think we want to get stuck doing archaeology when we need to be exploring to figure out what's around us. But we can come back to it later, right? And also, yeah. I want to make sure everybody is busy. 
that we should. Yeah, so now that we know that there's alien life forms out there, how do we want to respond? So you might feel like, well, I want to do it this way because that's the way I feel. But I also have to think about your empire. <laughs> it's going to be good for people. Uh, now, I can't pick this first option, which is Xenophiliac? Xenophilic? Xenophilic? Which basically, we love aliens. <laughs> uh, it's kind of... You see, if we, if we were able to pick this one, it's got some limitations. You can't attack a neutral enemy or a neutral entity. Uh, makes the contact go faster so you can get a communication quicker. First contact speed of 100%. Uh, then you got these other two options. Now this one is, uh, if you really want to be warlike, you can pick this last option. I just, it's so tough if you if you want to be a total jerk <laughs> from the get-go. Because <laughs> uh, you're going to get attacked, you know, as soon as you meet another empire. And that could be, you know, I would rather be the attacker. I don't want to be the one attacked, because that usually means I'm not ready for it. Uh, so I like to kind of be neutral, kind of be friendly, at least until I can get powerful enough to do something about the Zoom Okay, first contact, very difficult plus two. Uh, so I'm going to go with this, this middling option. Now there is this thing called espionage and spying. Uh, so we got these envoys. Construction here. complete. Envoy, envoy, potato, potato. Uh, they're not doing anything right now, but later I could put one to either spy on another empire or I can use them to try to establish contact with bogey. Basically, another ship or something I find out there that's talking to somebody. Or I can improve relations or harm relations, and there's some ways to get influence around those. But anyway, we don't need to worry about that right now. All right, our construction ship is done. Uh, we can't construct anything. Yeah, we can't build mega structures. That's a long ways away uh, from being able to do that. Uh, so what we really want to do, I guess, is send him on here. Now here's where I think they missed an opportunity. I mean, why not have like an engineer thing? Uh, so like you've got the scientists and the commanders. You know, why not let me put a... Why not have like this engineer class? I think that'd be cool. Engineering leaders, and I could put them on my construction ships and give them little perks. You know, maybe they build stuff faster or better. I don't know. Maybe they learn stuff in the actual building. But anyway, there's no options like that. Uh, so they kept that part relatively simple. Uh, but anyway, I can't do anything right now with it, but I can send them there so when this is ready, fully surveyed, then you can put the star base in. You know, it's part of this game, is thinking ahead. You, know, you don't want to just sit, have him doing nothing if you can help it. Even moving to the place where he needs to be uh, to create the next thing. We'll shave a little Anomaly bit of found. time off of the construction. Okay, now here we've got our first anomaly. Uh, so what this, again, little story points. Ship sensors picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Tegura system. Now here's the thing. I could research this and get some, possibly get something really cool. Maybe something minor, but, you know, anything is good. <laughs> uh, as long as it's not, uh, he gets killed doing this, or she gets killed doing this. But it's going to take 120 days while they're doing this to not serve them. So since this is only a routine, it's the quickest one, so I might say go ahead and research it. Uh, if this was difficult or hard or hellish, <laughs> You might want to leave it, come back to it later. But, uh, it's a little bit of time, but it's going to take me some time to make it. Uh, the other stuff, anyway. Here's what I'm going to do: I'll leave it be for now. I'll go ahead and finish my survey, and then when they're done with that, I can have for okay. This guy's down here. He's got. Getting you. Ooh, he likes that sublight boost, doesn't he? Isn't this game gorgeous? I mean, I spent a lot of time looking at that tactical screen, but you can't do man. See stuff happening. Right, he's doing that. She's doing that. We got 240 minerals. Still not enough to build a building. Anomaly found. We got another anomaly. Yeah, 
So this is a scientist, but I can make her governor planet. Uh, if you make a scientist a governor, then they give, uh, you know, pretty common sense. They boost your research. They also reduce your empire size. And then you can get these special traits, like this one will produce more immunity. So at some point, I might want to put her as a, in the role of a governor of a planet instead of a ship. That'll be, you know, when we run out of stuff to survey, that's something good you can do with your scientists. Okay, I lost track of what I was thinking there. Yeah, here, I want to try to build this as soon as I can. I need 24 more minerals to make that happen. New sit rep. A group of radical priests and the devoted followers on Unity broke away from the established religion to form their own church. The very disciples. Oh, this doesn't happen every time. So, yeah, we learned many of their agents have infiltrated the military. These renegades have secretly been diverting resources to the construction of a small fleet of starships at a hidden facility on Unity. So, they have fled. New sit rep. Questline here. Cultist fleet. Oh. Well, that's not good. And it's basically, what that means is we're going to get attacked. There they are. They got 191. So I think our fault fleet should be able to handle that. God, I'd hate to lose this early in the game. Go ahead and attack that guy. <clears throat> Watch him have better technology than us. You know, one of the problems with this game is a lot of times you just want to watch the space battle. It's so pretty. But you keep getting dinged, all these little messages and notifications about other stuff. So you have to constantly pause this, go deal with that other Fleet thing. action underway. Watch this. I even like to slow it down to maximum for slowest speed. I always wanted to be uh, working on a game like this or a movie. There's lots of space combat, and then I could be the sound engineer for that. Because so I would have the easiest job in the world. <laughs> if the game or movie were realistic! Anyway, we continue. Maybe it's like electric, you know, electric cars uh, you can buy will simulate the sound. So, like, you get the electric truck and make it sound like it was a real F 150. <laughs> Maybe that's what's happening here. They're like, yeah, pipe in some sound effects into the ship so we can, you know, hear the battle. There's a whole lot we can do with these ships that haven't even touched on yet. Let's see what's happening. We can look here at the output and see what's, what, what kind of damage we're getting and taking. So we're using our small mass driver kinetic weapon bullets, I guess. We'll uh, and nuclear missiles, explosives. So you have three kinds of damage. Energy, kinetic, and explosive. Not quite sure why. <laughs> you know, explosives seem kind of kinetic to me, but anyway. Uh, so we're doing okay with that. Then we can look at the enemy. So they've got red lasers they're using. I don't know. Yeah, can we learn about their shields? I don't really ever get this granular with this, but you can. Apparently, some people will tailor their fleets depending on you know, what uh, the other other empire they're fighting at the time specializes in. Kind of a rock paper scissors type of deal. I'll show you that. I'll talk about in a minute. Let's go ahead. Oh, not that fast. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to win this battle. We are going to need to get on that fleet early. Let's see, our Valiant Space Forces have skillfully disabled a ship. It's mostly intact, but picking up faint life signs from inside its hull. We should conduct a boarding operation. New sit rep. Now, I really wish this game had some way... I, don't, I guess it's not possible the way the game is set up, but it would be nice if you could just watch the battle in like a mute mode where everything else stopped and you could just watch the battle. They, everything happens in real time. Okay. And so we can see we lost a Corvette. Council ah! ready. Suck. Uh, well, they, I guess it sucks a little worse for them. Hong Shin. Let's see. Corvettes. We need to 
really reflect on what happened with this. Damage to armor. So you can see they did a lot more damage to shields than they did to armor. So you might say, well, let me just pump up my armor. But we probably won't be fighting too many of these. need to get a science ship to come back and the easiest way is just to click in right click on the system and say research the projects in the system uh, this will probably give us some nice uh, technology boosts you know I love this when you defeat a fleet you'll often get this debris debris and if you re if you study it with a science ship you might get some new weapons new uh, just all kinds of cool stuff for your ships basically a free way to get some research bonuses. Not sure why that's popping up. Oh, my agenda's ready. Okay. So we can activate this. That moves over there. So we're going to get 10% happier people uh, for 10 years. And then we can choose another agenda. Uh, display of power, I like to pick because it gives us more influence with the power projection. So again, power projection is about how many ships you have, how big your fleet is. So right now it's only 0.24. If I were to pick this, I guess we might bump it up uh, 0.25. <laughs> so a little bit better. It's good for when you're starting to conquer people. Uh, we can expand the council, uh, which this is probably... I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't pick this one. Because <laughs> this you get another whole council member even more bonuses coming in. So that's probably what I will pick. But you see, I could go with the unity bonus. Um, sometimes you're not happy with your council, I guess. You might want to swap the minister of state out for something else. Uh, the strong on your own is a benefit of being a xenophobe. But it's got a really nasty trade-off. So you get population growth speed, which is lovely. But you suffer a Five and then a 10% hit to your trade value, which that sucks. <laughs> it, it depends. Some people uh, don't really use trade, they just have generators and they make all their money that way. They're not so reliant on trade, but I like trade. Uh, so that, that one really makes that one make me, makes me pause with that. Uh, so I'll just go with this expand the council. It's 138 months, so, and I get no uh, initial perks with it, so it's kind of it's going to suck for a while, but uh, then we'll be able to add somebody to the council. Okay, so that is done. I got him coming up there. It looks like we've got enough minerals now to make another district. And you got to be careful with districts, because uh, you see they do uh, cost money. It's going to cost me one energy. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, the city ones cost two, the industrial ones cost two, but these basic ones only cost one. So we get this uh, built. I start building on that. Uh, so this brings me to populations. <laughs> so it's not enough just to build the district. It's not going to do anything unless you've got people working that district. You can see this will give me jobs for two miners. Now work is divided into... Uh, I guess three categories. You got your rulers, which are your uh, politicians, and then you got specialists, and then workers at the very bottom. Uh, so what tends to happen is uh, people want to be specialists. Or I guess they want to be rulers. Uh, so if there's any slots, uh, somebody will take that. Uh, and then if there's any slots open in a specialist job, they'll take that over these worker jobs down the bottom. Now, if you have a lot of slaves, there's, there's, there's slavery in this game, or the indentured servants, there's different kinds of uh, menial labor, uh, you can try to force people into those worker jobs, or robots, that you know, might do your worker jobs for a while. Uh, but it's it can get kind of tricky if you put a whole bunch of specialist jobs available when you really need to have farming, maybe you're running out of uh, food. You're like, man, I need farmers, but those four farmers have become bureaucrats. <laughs> They're bureaucratic instead of farming. Oh my God. Well, you could come down in here and say, well, I'm just going to click on this. And this will uh, you know, basically uh, force people to prioritize that. But the only problem is you only get one, I believe, <laughs> to double check. 
Uh, so there's no way I can, uh, you know, say, well, I want farmers and miners, or I want this and this. Uh, so you've only got that one thing. Uh, so we're, I'm just saying, uh, you want to be careful if I just, for whatever crazy reason, put a whole bunch of industry here, and suddenly everybody's a metallurgist or a, an artisan, and I'll run out, nobody will be doing these other jobs. Now you see I got clerks, four clerks down there, which I really want to get those guys doing something other, other than clerking, or clerking, I guess you're from uh, the UK. I lost my train, <laughs> train of thought on that. Uh, but anyway, when this gets made, I'll have two miners. And we also have to keep an eye on this uh, unemployment. Uh, so I got one job and I got eight housing available. So eventually this uh, guy will get made here two months and then that'll fill up the last possible job. And if you keep on making people and I don't have more jobs, and then I'll get unemployment and I'll get crime and I'll get all sorts of bad things. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So you kind of want to keep a step ahead of the game. This will hopefully get, this will hopefully be built before we get to unemployment, uh, but we'll see. All right. Let me ever finish this. This guy, he lost, uh, he lost the Corvettes. So we're going to want to do something about that situation. Now, I don't have a lot of alloys here, so I've got to be careful. I'm going to need to make a colony ship pretty soon, which puts the people on this planet. So I don't want to go crazy with my fleet, but I think it is kind of urgent that I have at least what I started with, uh, which is three Corvettes. Now we're going to get in to uh, <laughs> uh, ship design. Now you don't have to do this. You, the computer will set up ships for you. Uh, some people don't even ever mess with ship design, custom ships, they just, whatever the computer does is fine. Uh, I think that's kind of silly to do that because it's a lot of fun to design ships. You get to kind of experiment, try different things, just sometimes just do it for the fun of it. Like, oh, I want to see what that looks like. That kind of weapon. Uh, or I want to put together this really complicated fleet with lots of supporting roles and uh, different sorts of things for my ships to do, uh, other than just raw numbers. Uh, on the negative side, though, you can screw yourself up pretty bad, uh, making a really ineffective fleet. If you're like, well, let me just make everything, you know, mass drivers. And then you come up <laughs> with somebody who, like these are mass drivers, kinetic weapons. Uh, you see, on the positive side, they do 50% more damage against shields. But on the negative side, they do 50% less damage against armor. So maybe fighting somebody that's forgone, maybe they've got crappy shields, but they have a whole lot of armor. Uh, well, suddenly your <laughs> fleet is not very effective. So you can kind of go with a jack-of-all-trades approach, which is kind of the default uh, here starting off. Now, I find the computer tends to want to stick you with lasers. You know, it seems like it always wants to switch everything over to energy weapons, even if you have better kinetic weapons. So I don't trust it. <laughs> I like to make my own stuff. Now, this is kind of superfluous because we, we've only got Corvettes. We don't even have any of the other uh, types of ships we can mess with, but a few options. Uh, one is, well, we only got this one uh, compartment on this ship. You know, once we get into some of the bigger ships, we might have two or three uh, sorts of uh, parts of the ship, fore, aft, uh, broadsides, whatever. I forget what, what to call it all. Uh, but I could go with either an interceptor uh, section or a picket ship. Now, this is what I would not want to choose because this is basically good for when you're fighting fleets that have lots of uh, little, uh, maybe you're fighting a carrier with lots of little ships, lots of missiles. These, these ships are good for that. So you put these, I uh, kind of want to think of them as yeah, flak, can flak cannons. And then this one is for, this is the same thing with energy point defense systems. So I, I, you know, maybe you've got these battleships and they're getting swarmed by all these little crappy ships <laughs> uh, are getting hit with lots of missiles, you know, so these can try to take those out for you. Uh, that's that's going to be a lot later in the game, I feel like. Again, I'm not the world's foremost expert on this stuff, so maybe somebody that knows more can chime in about that. Uh, but what I can do at this early stage, actually I don't even have a computer. I don't even have my computer yet, so all I got is this one tactic, swarm tactics. So he's going to rush in, 
try to deal as much damage as possible from the range of their shortest range weapon. So whatever I put in here is going to be uh, make a big difference. So if I put a red laser, you see that's got a range of 0 to 40. If I put a nuclear missile on there, it's got a range of 0 to 100. And then the mass drivers typically have a little bit more range. So see, if I put this mass driver there, let's say I put that there to the laser. Well, you see, this is only goes to 40, this one goes to 50, and this will go to the uh, shortest range weapon. So he's going to close to 40, uh, I guess, so these two can, can operate. Uh, so what I kind of like to do is get some fun. <laughs> no other reason. Uh, let's go ahead and put that there, and then we can figure out how much. So we can't hurl it, we can just afford to have two shields and then some armor. The armor doesn't cost any energy. Got just enough energy for that ship to work. Now, if I try to put three deflectors on this, you're gonna say, up, oh, can't make it. <laughs> you don't have enough power." So then I can say, "Well, wait a minute. I've got a reactor booster." Oh, look at this. <laughs> well, this has made the ship really expensive because now you got to make spend five alloys just to make this stupid booster. So I wouldn't do it that way. Now, I don't really have anything interesting to put in this A slot. <laughs> uh, later, I will. Uh, but this is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, so we're going to have to come up with a different name for it. Let's call this the Hussar Energy. Just so I can keep up with what it does. And then we can clear this. Let's just clear it. Now let's make one with nothing but mass drivers. All to complete the rest there. Now see, it kind of wants to have... Let's see, maybe we can make it up. Yeah, that works too. I don't know why I wanted to have uh, extra armor. You know, usually what happens is they take your shields out, then they take your armor out, and then you start taking the whole damage. And so I guess depending on how you want it to. Maybe you want more. <laughs> you know, if armor is cheaper than shields, a lot of cases. Let's see, well, like, yeah, the armor costs 10 alloys, but it gives you 100 armor hit points. Uh, the shields only give you 75 hit points, but the big advantage of a shield is it recharges. So after the battle, the shields will automatically come back, uh, whereas if the armor gets damaged, you'll have to go back to the base to heal it back up. So I kind of like this. Uh, oh, no, we're going to change the name of it. Let's call this the Kinetic Ship. And yeah, let's do one more, but nothing but missiles. And we'll call this the artillery. It's gonna keep this. And this will give me a little variety, make things a little more interesting. Right, so this guy's got uh, these missiles, and they can shoot from a long ways off, so he'll probably be less likely to get uh, into the fray. Okay, then we come back in here, look at our fleet. And yeah, let's see. Let's retrofit this one. Make him uh, energy. And let's add some these other two things I made. Let's give him one artillery. So we'll give a some an energy ships and then a couple of kinetic ones and then one artillery ship. And then this button will try to reinforce the fleet. So we'll see if we start making any. We'll probably only be able to make one now. I can make two. Okay, so this will mean I have to wait forever uh, to make my colony ship, but then I'll have uh, four ships in case this guy decides to come back or get attacked real early. Now, we want to get this thing uh, pumped up to 30 as quick as we can. Yet another concept we need to explain here is fleet size versus naval capacity. So my naval capacity is 20. So again, if I if I build 30 ships or I've got 30... Uh, yeah, Different kinds of ships take different types of capacity. These Corvettes only, it's just one. Destroyers are two, cruisers are three, I think battleships are four. And, uh, some, something like that. It could be off in some bad But Basically, if you make 30 ships and then you start going over this capacity, you're going to run out of money go bankrupt. It's going to be bad. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll get this pumped up in a minute, or soon. But on the other hand, uh, the fleets, individual fleets, can only, they're restrained by this thing called fleet capacity. 
So even if the naval capacity was 30 or 40 or 50, uh, I can only go up to 30 before this guy runs out of uh, management skills, I guess. Uh, so that's a hard limit there, the 30. Uh, so I'll either certain types of leaders will have more fleet capacity, and that's good. Uh, basically, you want the biggest fleet you can have. That's more power. The computer won't attack you if it's scared of you, etc. Um, and then there's techs you can get to pump this up. So really, we want to be thinking of trying to get 20 ships as quick as we can. That'd be a good compromise there. And then later we'll be able to go up past that. And then we can also... Let's go ahead and make the ships and then we'll upgrade later. Make sure he is back to base. So he's getting the benefit of that dock ship bonus. Okay, he's waiting for something. Oh, I think we're still waiting for the survey to finish. System reconnaissance completed. Happened. It's only... 2201 is only the first year. Okay, got the system surveyed. Let's go ahead and do that anomaly. Him, build a, oh, see, we need 34 alloys to be able to build a star base. So we could wait uh, for this to catch up. Looks like three months of waiting. Or we could buy uh, some alloys. That got to be careful with this because you can see the market fee is 30%. So this is horribly inefficient. It's a big waste to have to do this, but it takes money to make money. Dan yeah, likes to say. Now we can build the star base. Now you see it costs 60 freaking influence. <laughs> so even if it wouldn't make any sense to have four or five uh, construction ships, they'd just be sitting there because they would never have enough influence to be building them more than one thing at a time. Uh, so we just have to wait on that. But now we've got our star base being built there. Normally studied. This guy coming back to study three, so everything is looking good. Slater roll. Love to see all these bars floating out. There's so much different happening. It's all happening. Plans are coming together. You know what? It might be. Just the nine ship. I'm going to wait a little bit on that. Because I can tell you, in four months, we're going to be able to get more value out of our science ships. I'll be a little patient with that. Eventually, I'm going to want at least three science ships out surveying. Construction complete. That computer be out there once he's you know <laughs> once he gets here it's all over well it's not all over then we'll be competing for stuff and we'll be missing out on anomalies and archaeological sites and all the rest we want to get things surveyed so we can pick the very best places to expand instead of just having to pick whatever you're dealt or whatever they leave you a lot easier to claim an un a lot easier to claim an unclaimed system than have to deal with combat, especially at this stage of the game. Okay, what's this? We got our star base built. Now we need to colonize this thing, but we're going to need more consumer resources as well as more alloys. So you can see this is a pretty expensive proposition because we're only bringing in one consumer good per turn. Ouch! Uh, so that'd be 64 months to have that. Uh, we're doing a little bit better with metal for alloys, but not by much. So what I need to do is build a industrial site. So that's going to cost 381 minerals to make that. And then again, we'll have to have people to work the spot. And I've still got to wait for this mining district to finish. So we're kind of uh, stuck <laughs> uh, being able to build that colony. Now you could just try to buy some stuff to get yourself out of this. It's 250 or 670 to buy the uh, consumer goods. So we'll do that. Alloys, though, I think we're just going to have to wait. Battle debris secured. This is kind of risky because it's a lot smarter to let this build up so you have a nice reserve in case something bad happens and you start to suddenly hemorrhage cash. <laughs> You know, to have a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, a fun there, 
and so it doesn't instantly go to zero. It's very smart. We're kind of engaging in some high risk behavior. <laughs> Risky behavior. Okay, what's what happened there? Did he not study it? Oh, it's got to be a military ship. Okay. I haven't read that wrong. I don't really get this 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 quest chain too much. Yeah, these things flashing here are where they think the highest hit might be. Isolated a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Tagura system. The signal is a song! A complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation. One that science officer Stephanie Mueller cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown. Though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. Huh. And then we get 250 society and physics research. Bada boom, bada bang. So that'll give us a nice little bump on our uh, these things we've been working on here and here. And you can see how that works out. All right. This has got no orders. So what do we have to do to put this? There we go, now we can research it. Okay, hopefully we'll get something cool for doing that, because we are it's not docked. <laughs> Let's push this timer. As soon as this mine gets built, we'll have two additional miners. This clerk's will become miners. And then we'll have 11 more minerals coming in in turn. Ah, <sighs> What a pleasant... <laughs> then we get our tradition. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of options. Oh my god. Oh! All right, well, some of these are have prereqs, so I don't have to worry about everything. Uh, to me, there's really only one choice, and that's, do you want to go expansion or do you want to go discovery? Other people, you can read all sorts of stuff. People recommend different things. But the reason I like discovery is uh, we get an agenda, which is okay. Uh, but the real cool thing is the edict, map the stars. So I'll show you what that does after I click this. But that's going to make a big difference with my exploration, exploring the systems, and find more anomalies. Survey faster would be really cool. Plus, they'll do research. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, they will research anomalies 20% faster, so that'll be cool as well. And then most of the things in here are okay. Uh, this one, pretty obvious, fast surveys. The ship's a little bit safer. Research. So pretty much everything is useful there. The other choice would be expansion. And sometimes I pick this one second. It's, it's kind of hard uh, time in this one just right. Uh, but it makes it cheaper to buy star bases. So you don't have to use as much influence to get a star base. It's only a 10% uh, reduction, but that can be <laughs> sometimes that's the difference of a couple of months. Maybe longer. Empire size is a nice one. All of these are pretty cool. Yeah, that population growth is really a big draw here, I think. Yeah, this one's kind of cool too. Sometimes this one can be a bad thing because you pretty much have unemployment right away sometimes. So you could pick this one. You can see the initial, as soon as I adopt it, you get faster colony development, uh, habitats. We don't need to worry about that <laughs> for a long time. Uh, but that's a pretty cool perk. And then once you finish the whole tree, uh, then you get the uh, thing they call the uh, ascension perks. It's a whole other set of choices to make. But again, I don't know how you beat Discovery. I've tried some of these other ones. And always come back and Council end agenda up regretting available. it. Like, why didn't I just pick Discovery? Okay, so we got that activated. So now we need to come in here to government policies and turn on map the stars. 25% survey speed done. 
Anomaly discovery chance, 10% done. Ship hyperlane detection range, plus one. Oh, we gotta wait for <laughs> four influence. Now, I can't, I mean, uh, for uh, Unity, which I can't buy this. I can buy all these other resources. You can't buy Unity, you can't buy influence, please not. Direct. I'm gonna have to wait, I guess, until 30th uh, to turn that on. Uh, that's gonna be huge. chance to find those anomalies. So that's really good. I really want to get that quickly. So I'm not just certain because that happens, it's triggered by surveying, right? So you want to get that before you really have a big set of guys out there doing surveys because you're missing out on that 10% chance. So I might go so far as to stop surveying. Go ahead and let him investigate that until we can get that perk. So the survivors offered stiff resistance. Our boarding party was able to secure prisoners. From them, we've learned that this conspiracy goes far deeper than we initially suspected. The agents of the Grey Disciples include several flag officers and high-ranking officials within our government. The deep state. Uh, deeply disturbed state, I guess, in this case. And mass arrests are being made on unity. All assets belonging to the cult. However, several of the starships they built have vanished. Oh, we're we'll gonna have to be fighting them soon. Make sure that situation log. Uh, so I'm just putting on these map things so we can keep track of where this stuff is. Lots of flashies. Three more days. Construction so, complete. now because we're still in the slush fund. <laughs> yeah, if you go over that though, it can start hurting you up there. Oh man, everybody's needs orders. Okay. You go back to survey. Who's still doing that? Ship. See? She did that uh, anomaly. Now we've got two uh, physics research stations. Try to get my colony ship built. I need five more metal. I think we can wait a, we're to wait a month for this. I really hate buying a 30% markup. That's just painful. That's mm -hmm. it. almost done. Bada boom. We can make our, oh, we need 353. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait on that, but you can see now we have four. Oh, wait, why didn't that switch? Let's see if that automatically switches. Now look at that. So it should have those clerks should have become miners. Uh, the clerks do give you a little bit of trade, a little bit of a uh, little bit of this, but I don't want those guys. I'm gonna do this. So make sure we got our mining miners at work. We need those minerals. Oh, I forgot about this. If I unlock this, we'll get another population. Uh, a sprawling slum. So if you spend 300 gold, you get an extra pop. But it'd just be a clerk at this point, so I think I'll wait on that. We need those miners mining. Let's see. We should bump up our mines. This is 36 right now. Now it's 47. Uh, so that helps. So we're getting almost to a point now we can build a building. Let's make sure everybody is... Can we make our colony? Yep, we can make our colony ship. Now there's two ways to do this. You could just make it here, or you can click on the planet. Steady it a little bit, see if there's anything special about it. It's a nice size. You know, 23 is a good... Uh, Good amount of room, but there's no nothing special about it. A lot of times there'll be some things like boats, crystals, there's all sorts of little perks uh, a planet can have. 
and that'll help you decide how you want to specialize that planet. You know, if, for example, this had something that gave me a big research bonus, or a bonus to my generators, or 20, sometimes you find planets that have huge bonuses for mines, it's pretty obvious what you want to specialize in. Uh, but this one's just kind of wide open, you can do whatever you want to with it. Uh, so we can, we've only got the one species to choose from. Let's take another look at this. So this gives you a nice little overview. This is the I think when we get this colonized, we'll take a little break here. I guess I need some more cooler feet. He's, yeah, this is going to take a long time to build that sucker. And you, it's going to take a really long time once we... It's not like they land and instantly there's a colony there. Oh, no, it takes a long time. It's going to be eating away resources the whole time. So another thing, you, you know, you might say, Oh, I got all these planets. I might have five or six colonies going, but they'll probably die. <laughs> you'll start hemorrhaging resources and, and you lose the game. So again, you don't want to get over your skis. What's this? Lancing hit by circle passing. Mass driver rounds. Three rounds fire from a neighboring galaxy. Yeah. This is a cool concept. Right? These mass driver rounds, basically bullets from God knows how far away, how long ago. You know, wouldn't this just be so damn cool to find something in real life, like a NASA? Hey, what we thought was this sort of waste of floating around in the uh, you know, near Earth orbit. It turns out this is like some kind of projectile that was fired from another galaxy millions of years ago. Think of what we could learn. It really is incredible. Okay. Looks like we've got a leader has leveled up. Stephanie Mueller. Doing great surveys, great anomalies. Okay, now she is uh she's not on the council. And her other trait is for a planet governor. So you might want to think, well, I just keep thinking about her as a governor. Keep it uh, in the same park. You know, if I if she's gonna be doing archaeological work, for example, you know, this is you can't do both, right? You can't be a governor and an archaeology, doing archaeology projects. However, there's not that many of these archaeological sites. So she could govern, you know, if there's an archaeology to do, she could do that. And then when that's over, she could come back and be a governor somewhere. So you could think about it that way. Uh, we could take this trade here, which is nice. It's 10% experience gained. She's only level two. <laughs> so got a long ways to go to 10. You know, she'll probably be dead before she gets to 10, to be honest. So that might help. We could double down on this trait she's got for planet governor. I think I'm going to go just adaptionist. Just, uh, all this does is make it a little bit faster. Uh, choices, choices, choices. Uh, yeah, I guess this one's here just in case you can't make up your mind. You know what the heck? Well, let's just make her an archaeologist. Be optimistic. Maybe we'll find lots of sites. We don't want to do any archaeology for a while, though. Oh, might be Construction complete. Show you this. So we don't have any yet, but we do uh, usually archaeology. A couple different ways to find these. Uh, these are really awesome artifacts. So give us a big boost. Some passive effects on them and activate them. It's really super cool to find those. Okay, I think that's about all he can do. It's construction ships. Might as well see them from there. She's done. Now I could put her to excavating. Kind of stupid thing to do right now with all this uh, survey work to do. Tap out a couple systems for the survey. I think you can automate this. This used to be a tech you had to learn to automate these ships. There's no real point in picking about four or five because I'm trying to sometimes some anomalies and I have to get out of it. You lose all those uh, points you set up when you study the project. But just a couple, so you keep thinking about it. Let's see, 33. Well, this is going to be a long time before this is ready. You know, I really should have made a science ship before I made a college ship. 
Yeah, this always pops up. Habitable words, habit, habitable worlds survey. Uh, <clears throat> so they want to find, I think. Okay. I learned about various forms of life throughout the galaxy. I don't think there's anything that's tracked with this. Yeah, we need to find eight worlds that are habitable. If you complete this, you get a really nice reward. It's kind of inevitable. I think I forgot to do something. We were gonna check this. I don't quite have enough to make any buildings yet. Okay, the resources I hope. This gives you 5,000 research and storage capacity and a clerk. So you notice these have uh, caps on them. I mean, we're gonna worry right now about going over 15,000. But uh, eventually, this will be an issue, and you, you really hate it. Really sucks when you go over, because then you either have to sell it, you know, at 30% <laughs> loss, or if you have these resource silos, you could build up even more reserves. So that when, again, inevitably, there's going to be something that happens that suddenly, instead of plus 14 food, now you got negative 100 food. You know, this happens all the time, especially later in the game. And if you don't have any reserves, uh, you're screwed. So I like to have massive, massive reserves. Okay, let's let this get to, I think it was 400, and then we'll see about the building. Anomaly Scratch found. Scratch that, we need to make another, we need to make an industrial So let's just hold off on the building until then. Somebody's found another anomaly. Again, it's just a routine one, so let's go ahead and research it. to give this uh, construction ship a chance to get down there anyway. If we have a, how much is it going to cost to hire another scientist? So almost ready for a third science ship. We gotta wait for this to finish. Now we could bump this to a lower priority. Build oh, 30 more. We gotta wait one more month. Now the trouble with this is uh, we're gonna have to spend 12 minerals per month to fund this. <laughs> so yes, we'll have more consumer goods and more alloys, but we'll also have 12 fewer minerals. And so there's a trade-off. You want to keep checking your math. You know, if this was zero coming in, it'd be foolish to build that. But we're okay. It'll slow us down a little bit, but we can uh, hopefully find some more uh, minerals. Uh, irritated. What is this? Crew. Oh, this is one of the anomalies we were studying. The remains of a spacefaring vessel. Very distinctive design. It matches no known make on Earth. Let me look at all the stuff that's happened. It's only three years in. We haven't even encountered the AI yet. <laughs> Here we are making. What is this? Third or fourth discovery? Oscillates the craft known as the Catalo suffered a navigational error when exiting FTL and bringing it too close to the gamma ray jets of Karuma. Large portions of the ship were stripped apart through radiolysis. There are no survivors. But we get some society research. Might be getting pretty close. Well, <laughs> I think this is because I put it on huge. I think that's why that's taken so long. You can only build one thing at a time, so it doesn't do you much good to try to stack up on that. <laughs> However, the nice thing about that, though, if I did want to start something else, I could prioritize it so I don't lose this. I could cancel this, but let's say I wanted to start a building, I could just queue it up. That's a nice little thing. Especially when you get like 50 planets, <laughs> you don't want to sit there and look at each one plan three or four things in advance. Okay, now we're back to our Minister of State. Remember, this is one of the cabinets. This is one of our government. There he is. So we probably want to pick something that's good for the council, and I noticed there's one that is no-brainer. Can you see which one it is? 
Fertility preacher. Pop growth speed, 3%. Remember, this is per level. Boom. So he's level two now. So he gets all these, uh, well, he's not a governor. Or actually, what's he doing? I think he is the governor of Italy, right? Yeah, he's the governor of this planet. So now we get a uh, planet governor. He's going to get 4% on all those bonuses. So we're going to have 4% more minerals, 4%. I think he's also, since it's only one planet, he should be the, yeah, his home planet is Unity. It's another little nice thing about these leaders, they have home planets. So since he's on his home planet, he also gets plus two immunities per level, which is this little guy over here. Uh, this basically keeps people happy, keeps them entertained. If it gets too low, uh, then you won't get as much growth. And there's all sorts of problems that happen. So if they'll tell us what this does. So we have high amenities right now, so people are 4% happier. What does happiness do? Population approval rating. Pops with a higher amount. I guess it's about stability, which is this percentage here. So if you have a good uh, stability, your government's stable, then you get, oh, some nice perks. Wow. So 13% more resources for jobs, 13% for trade value. So those are all great. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you don't want this to drop too low. You gotta keep an eye on that. All right, so he's building that industrial district. And now we're gonna have 6% population growth speed and 20% uh, more food, right? Because this is, actually, is that per level or is that total? This might just be uh, total. Doesn't say it scales with level. Yeah, but anyway, three percent population growth speed. So you should be able to see that here. So base growth is three. One point five for pops. Xenophobe gives ten percent. Nomadic. So we get a new person. It's months. I thought it took nine months. Didn't you? <laughs> okay, back to how are we doing on the colony ship? So that 134. Oh, we got another. I love that sound. It's just music to my ears. Oh, oh, getting so lucky with these. <laughs> and again, I'm not going to keep repeating myself about this. You got to think: Do you want a governor? Do you want somebody that's just doing surveys and archaeology? Thinking long term about what would be useful. Is he on the council or not? Yes, he is. Uh, so we could go with this one Edict Fund plus 15, because yeah, there will be more edicts soon, and it's nice to have a little bit bigger slush fund. Edict Upkeep. What is that? What is Edict Upkeep? Does that cost money to have it? Oh, I know what that means. Yeah, so this is the upkeep here. So this is 15 unity per month. 15. So this would uh, cut that a little bit. Again, it doesn't say per level. So I guess it's just total. So 7.5%. You know, that could actually be, you know, pretty significant. But I don't know how you beat <laughs> just plain old research. I'm going to go with that one. I might regret that later. That'll make this stuff speed up. <laughs> I think research speed is Empire One. Let's see if we click here. It doesn't say there, but I'm pretty sure that will affect all of these. Right. Gotta wait for that survey to finish. That's done. I could queue this up. I 
want to get that column we put down before I take my break. This game is like the worst for that. Just one more turn, just one more thing. I mean, <laughs> forget about it. Recon pass completed. Starbase there. Now this is going to take some. It's going to take 90 alloys. And the science ship is 100. We only got 62, so we're going to probably run into a little bit of conflict there. Kind of nice to have five more minerals, three more uh, physics coming in. Let's make sure this guy is. Now this guy's kind of over there. Now we haven't talked about trade at all, uh, but the trade is has to deal with stations and I have a strategy <laughs> that I use for this because <laughs> oh my god uh, you can screw up so badly with trade pirates if you're not you don't know what you're doing <laughs> now this one uh, he's got by default we have a trade hub you know, that comes with the game comes with the first system not ideal in my opinion but to have it set up this way uh, but it's okay for now because we don't otherwise you'd have to build a whole other star base to get any trade but it's got a collection range of two which means you go two systems out in any direction and if there's any trade like this has a two trade value there it'll collect and since i've only got the one station there's no pirates but you know if i've got a let's say i put a station out here then there's going to be a sector right in the middle between where it's going and pirates start to build up there and then you'll have to have some either some corvettes to try to tamp down the pirates or build more stations just a big pita <laughs> you really want to put more thought into how you handle the trade so one thing you could do is just build another station somewhere around here make sure it's not you know here would be a good spot maybe you're here since it's a planet anyway uh, there's some special star base buildings that, that help out a planet <laughs> and then you could make the neb just nothing but trade so then you could bump this uh collection range up really wide so you can pick up trade from all around it uh, and then you could specialize uh, your second station just to make ship yards. it's not a bad strategy but I typically do those make Deneb the main shipyard place and then I'll build a little satellite <laughs> I'll build another station somewhere close to where the trade is and uh, move all the trade hubs to that and again as long as they're side by side there's no pirate issue you know, it's not the most cost-effective. You won't be bringing in the most trade with that, but you won't be dealing with those pirates. <laughs> Trust me, th that is the most annoying thing. You got a huge sprawling system, and you're trying to figure out all these patrols. Oh my God, that gets complicated. Okay, he's done. Let's. Uh... Oh yeah, <laughs> said all that to say, uh, we want to make sure we've got all the systems that are within the collection range surveyed, because there might be trade. And he could be picking up. He's got it. Only one, but two. So like one, two. So this, this, this. Uh, if those have trade, he could be picking it up. Shipyard. Almost done. Yeah. See, we can't build our science ship yet. We gotta wait. Fifteen more metal. Two more months. Okay, he's gonna. We got three clerks, so those will turn those into artisans and metallurgists when that gets done. And then I think we're going to want to build a boat. Yeah, see how even with all those speed boosts, it's going to take a while. He's going to touch down. Complete. Construction. Now we can build. Even here's a little interesting choice. We could say, do I want the mining stations built first or research stations built first? Uh, I typically go with the research first, but early in this, this early in the game, you might those five minerals might make the difference in having to wait a month or two to build something. So you might just go ahead and pick that. You can queue up the other one. It doesn't take that long. You know, it's nice that it's just one system for five. Now, something else I'll just tell you, if you 
thinking about as you're exploring these systems, take a look at them and see what's available, especially the sun. So you see that makes two physics. Then you got uh, a little bit of uh, you know, six minerals, some trade there. Because what's going to happen eventually is you'll be making these Dyson swarms and arc, arc builders, I think they're called. And so you want to have a sense of what you have in your uh, available because this is not really anything impressive. Just three, but you know, maybe you find a system that has five. It's not the right kind of star. <laughs> Uh, let's say this system, instead of the two, let's say they had five physics. You, know, you want to have a notepad handy. Trust me. You know, make a note of that. Okay, there's I got a system here with high uh, physics. Or maybe there's a five or six energy that Sun is making. Or just something impressive beyond two. Because <laughs> uh, that could be a spot later where you can put your dice and score. And then I don't think it's going to tell me at this point which systems have the most stuff. But, you know, if you find a system... Uh, that has a lot of planets, lots of bodies. You want to make a note of that too, because that's where you can put the arc welders later. Just go free and collect a whole bunch of them. Alex. Right. He's popping down. Or she's popping down. It says human. <laughs> I guess they don't get a name. The C A N S Cedar. I guess that's the way they think about it is our of pioneers a, have made planet a ship fall. full of people it's a ship full of like seeds and means of making it I guess it tell us if we actually read the text the ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters that you saw and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as a colony's temporary power source hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former ship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. Oh, so I guess there are people here. Uh, but they bring, I guess, lots of seeds and stuff. Start their uh, civilization. A great day for the Commonwealth of Man. Yay! Okay, and then that will activate the this bar. The colonizing planet will be complete by 2206. So it's going to take three years, somewhere about, uh, to make that first colony. And I think that's going to be a drain on our resources as that's happening. Does it seem to specify? I don't know. I seem, I seem like I remember seeing that somewhere. Okay, but anyway, soon. It's like a good spot for a quick break. But it won't make any difference to you, but I'm going to stop <laughs> the sandwich come back. Uh, so let me just pause it here. Uh, all right, my back. Yes, it looks like a back. Got my beverage. <laughs> you know, I was drinking coffee, but then I thought, why am I drinking coffee? I think Earl Grey hot. That's what the doctor ordered. That's what the captain ordered. <clears throat> notes here. Which he always, always keeps the notes handy. You know, some people would say, why are you using old fashioned? paper for this, Matt. You got, you're on a computer, you could use Excel spreadsheets for this. That's just too nerdy, okay? <laughs> I've got to set some limits on the level of nerd nerdiness I'm willing to expose myself to. Now I'm back. Hope you didn't miss me. I had some little uh, power bar and some unwashed grapes. <laughs> you know, drives my wife crazy. She's like, you why didn't you, you didn't wash those grapes? Like, well, you're the one always going on about how bad processed foods are, right? I mean, why, you know, washing the grapes is processing them, right? So I want the unwashed grapes. <laughs> Unfiltered ale. <laughs> you're unprocessed. Then. Give me some unwashed grapes. I don't know. See, I can see if I can get that going. Uh, I mean, what, what the worst case scenario is a little dirt on the grape? I don't know. Anyway, back to Stellaris. Where are we? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like to you? Kind of weird shape. It's kind of like a Homer Simpson pants. <laughs> him surveying. Her. Oh, sorry, Stephanie. Her surveying. We got Miroslav over there doing some surveying. Constructing. Oh, I remember we were debating whether or not we could make a science ship. 
I think we're ready for our third slash. Wait, what do you say? I guess the choice is between that and pumping up our fleet a little bit. I'll go ahead and get the so-called upgrade. It's not really an upgrade so much as a ladder. Picard, one of my role models. You know, if a guy is right about Earl Grey tea being the best tea, <laughs> I mean, imagine you could ask that thing to any kind of reference. I think I'd probably get Earl Grey hot tea. All right, since you've reported ship with seemingly identical properties to the unique remains and hovered near Corima. It's just dropped from hyperspace into the Tiberius system. They are hailing us. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, interesting. Screen. Deja vu. The crew of the... Oh, this is... Yeah, I remember this. Now, this is a very Star Trek theme. Anomaly found. The crew of the strange ship that mirrors the wreck found their crew. Perhaps you can communicate using raw data. They're explorers from another galaxy. Their ship's lack of weapons capacity would support this theory. We send back footage of human explorers on their first journey beyond our solar system, and the reaction from the alien crew appears to be jubilant. Maybe I'm thinking of a different anomaly. <clears throat> the transmit won't look to be their passenger manifest, data, crew logs. Yeah, no, this is yeah, this is what I was thinking of. Without a doubt, the data matches that of the wreck to the letter. One exception, the Parima wreck contained further entries. So this is like a time warp, a time travel situation. It would appear the Parima wreck is in the same ship as the one now before us, only older. Now, what? wasn't there a TNG episode about that, this, this exact scenario? I mean, I'm sure it's common enough in science fiction. I mean, the Star Trek people obviously probably got it from some, some other place. But I'm pretty sure I remember this episode. Uh, despite their alien mannerisms, the conservation of evidence, our own scientific attaches form must... I mean, what does it take to be an attaché? Would it be an attaché with mustache? Would that be the mustache and attaché? Getting off track. Uh, any information we gave unforeseen consequences? So this is that classic time traveler's grandfather paradox. <laughs> Marty McFly! So do we want to say, do we want to do the risky thing? Or just say, eh, what are you talking about? <laughs> of course we want to do the stupid thing. <laughs> uh, so let's see, give them the data. We create our own destinies. Speaking to one another in their strange language, entering flurry of commands. The ship's engine begin to fire. And imagine this, you know, your first contact with alien intelligence and it's a time travel paradox to boot good luck <laughs> bye <laughs> you're all gonna die we got another anomaly an asteroid collision looks easy enough it's a again a routine so it won't take too long to research it so it's just... oh we got a new science ship is ready uh, we only got old Apollo. Apollo. Wait. Voila! <laughs> this font. You know, one thing I don't like about this game is the font. It's hard to read. It's like tiny. And you can try to bump it up with the user interface, but it makes everything ugly because it just kind of amplifies, magnifies everything. I don't like it. So I just try to deal with this tiny text. It's one thing I wish they would improve. Okay, she's got later experience gain. Not that great, but she's only level one. She's got time to grow into the role. Now we have not one, not two, but three science survey vessels. We are going to be surveying the hell out of this place. Hmm. Let's have voila go down here and survey some of this. I guess I should try to gravitate towards these sparklies. 
forget what these are. Places where the Hyacinths might be, maybe? Places where those gray pirates are just Gray fanatics, what do they call them? Ships refitted. Okay, so great. We need to start pumping this guy up. Definitely gonna have to pump him up because that computer will show up. God, they always seem to have about four or five times the fleets that you do, no matter what. Definitely don't want to be sitting there with just three or four Corvettes when we meet the AI. Her resources inside J00487 are inside to stumble upon something most unusual. What had happened to be, what appeared to be a simple asteroid was in fact a long dormant relay station with complex electronics and advanced sensors set up to send signals back to an ancient empire. The impact also damaged some of the asteroid's internal structure and we can only extract one system. Okay, what's this? Asteroid relay stations modifier added <clears throat> planet sensor range two, planet hyperlane detection range plus four. So I think that's just for the ship. Is this empire-wide? Because encryption is an empire modifier. It basically makes it harder for them to, uh, the AIs, to steal our technology and learn where we are and stuff. So that's a pretty good one. I'm going to sensor range those. Damn, it's a tough call. We haven't met any AI yet, but it might be cool to have encryption right from the get-go. Let's go with that option. And again, I think that's an empire wide. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what that does. <clears throat> that computer is stealing our technology and figuring out where our home base is. I want to keep as opaque as possible. Right, now we've got oops, back to Unity. Okay, so it automatically moved the clerks into these rooms. So now we've got three artisans, they make consumer goods, two bureaucrats, they make unity, one enforcer keeps crime down, metallurgists, alloys, researchers, and one trader. And then we've got our worker jobs. So now we might want to think about a building. And this is uh, always a tough call. I usually go for this auto column. <laughs> like something on Lovecraft. Auto autochthon movement mo monument. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, but it makes something called culture workers. And you can only have one per planet. So that makes it seem special. And what the cultures workers culture workers do, it says it depends, but I think in our case it will give us uh, unity and then a little bit of uh, happiness and something about the governing ethics. So basically, the governing ethics, if everybody's on the same page, if everybody has the same ideology, uh, there'll be more stability, uh, less ruckus, basically. Especially if you want to be a dictatorship, <coughs> it's a handy thing if people are all in step. So that's what I go with. You know, we, I've done it before where I went with civilian industries. Uh, the first iteration of this doesn't do very much for you. It just gets you two artisan jobs. But later, when you upgrade it, it will make your artisans all produce more. And then the, there's one for alloys. It's the same kind of deal. I would think it's better to wait till you have a special planet for those. Specialized just in forge planet. Just in uh, factories. But I think the... Now, the commercial zones is another one that's always tempting to beat. Because, again, it's... If you trade, if you want to trade planet, it's very nice to have it re, uh, real close <laughs> to your home base. Uh, the closer, the better. Because the last thing you ever want is to have this lot of trade way off somewhere, this huge trade line, and you're going to have pirates out the wazoo. Uh, so that's a good option. Hollow theaters, it might sound cool, but you know, that's only really for cases where you have a lot of trouble. Try to keep your amenities up. 
Uh, precinct houses, you don't want to build unless you've got tremendous crime. Oh my god. Let's hope to god we don't run into a crime medical operation. There is one in the game, one in my last game, and it took me forever. That son of a... man. <laughs> he had criminal enterprises on every one of my planets, and all I could do was build these precincts, 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 until I could finally, because he's like way down at the bottom of the map, I had to conquer half the galaxy to get to his ass, <laughs> excuse my language, <laughs> to finally take him out. Oh my god. I hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, I'll have to build a bunch of precinct houses. Okay, well let's go with this monument. Now it does have an upkeep of six uh, consumer goods, so that's expensive. <coughs> but hopefully the new these new artisans will it'll just barely cover it. So these only make eight, so we're going to be suffering for a lack anomaly of found. Consumer goods for it doesn't help, too, that our species has this negative trait called Wasteful, which uh, ratchets up our consumer goods and keep by, upkeep by 10%. Uh, we might be able to take that off later, but hopefully by the time we're able to take that off, we'll have plenty of consumer goods, so it won't be so urgent. Okay, she, she found another one. Oh. Which is a curious signal. Although Colador VA Va, Caldor, Caldor Va appears totally desolate and void of life, where scanners have picked up the emanating colors. I get kind of lucky with all these just being routine. You know, normally, in a normal game, I have a bunch of hard, difficult, hellish ones. I just have to leave them because I don't want to just. Construction stop complete. Okay, this, this, this one's probably going to get done sooner. Not a very... Hopefully they find more stuff than that. Wonder. No, I'm not sure whether this might be a better one than that. I'm gonna have to get them all. Eventually, anyway. It's good to get the really good resource ones first. Got a decent amount of info. Alloy coming in. If we can upgrade. <coughs> Get out of. Let's go ahead and do this. <coughs> I'm a bit paranoid. I would love to get this up to up to 20 at least as soon as we can. Let's see. Having decrypted the signal, Stephanie Mueller was astonished to discover it was broadcasting in an archaic form of one of the main human languages. Speaking in these, thou's, and whence forths. Yeah, you know, I've never read David Eddings until recently. I was just reading uh, more like the second novel for the Belgariad. And it's really neat that there's a, a group of people in that uh, world that speak with these, thou's, kind of old fashioned like. I mean, it makes sense in the context of the novels. Those are really good, by the way. Now, I don't know why I never read them until now. But anyway, back to Stellaris. It appears to be <clears throat> reciting one of the lost works of William Shakespeare. Oh. Do people not know who Shakespeare is? They really need to be told he's a renowned human playwright. Ah. It appears that the broadcasting device is something satellite dish is the only non-natural structure on the moon. There is no hint as to who left it there or why, but going by the wear and tear on evidence, it must have been there since shortly after this play was first written. Long before humans learned the secret of space travel, we can only assume it was left there by ancient visitors to Earth who took a liking to the plague and decided to pay our species a strange and unexpected tribute. Let's see. I love stuff like this. Great flavor. Oh, goodness. So here we have a tough, tough, tough choice. So since I'm a xenophobe, I get this choice. I could say. Abhorrent. Suppress this nonsense about alien visitation. <laughs> Perhaps we could arrange for Grand Marshal Sidney Duclair to discover the text of these days. Interesting. Uh, so that's 125 influence, which that's a pretty big bonus at this point of the game. I mean, you can see I'm only bringing in three per month, so that's huge. 
Or I take this for five years, get 15% unity, 10% happiness. I'm gonna go with this option. <laughs> this goes at 125 influence. That's just too hard to pass up. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna need that. Okay. So let's see. It's at the end of these little stories sometimes I completely lose track of what the heck's going on. Still got two clerks to work with. The colonies come along. Two more years. System reconnaissance completed. She's good there, moving on. Everybody's working it! Science Division report success. Oh, finally got a technology. New tracking techniques allow us to tap a previously unattainable pocket of geothermal resources. This will help with mineral collection. Oh boy, now we have a difficult choice to make. Uh, this is the next generation of kinetic weapon. Be huge. We could definitely put that to great use. Really beef up our Corvettes. This planetary build speed 25%, so all those buildings and districts that have taken forever, we could knock 25% off of that. Again, great thing to get early on, because we're going to be doing most of our building early on. Or uh, carrier operations. Now, this one is tricky to get the timing right on this, because this is a card system, so this might not come back. You know, I might do coil gun, and then next time I'm ready to pick a technology, this might be nowhere in sight. It might not show up for years and years. I've had that happen. It's a real pain in the butt when that happens, because you really need this by the time you get to uh, battleships. <coughs> but you want these uh, little basic craft on the battleships so they can fly out. They're really awesome. Uh, so it's really a shame if you pass on this and don't see it until like much late, later in the game. I mean, I got a game right now. I still don't have this, and I'm all, I feel like I'm almost done with the game. When is this ever going to reappear? So that's a factor. But it'd be pretty useless to me right now. I don't need these strike craft in the foreseeable future. Uh, this would be very useful to have, just a speed bo uh, boost, you know, the faster you build things. But hopefully we can just plan really well. This won't be such a factor. <laughs> But I'm telling myself because I don't want coil gun! <laughs> coil guns! <laughs> I don't even know what the hell a coil gun is, but it sounds good. Cool. More powerful version of the early mass drivers using electromagnetic coils to rapidly accelerate projectiles. Ooh, 113 months on that sucker. Coil gun! How much more do we have to serve me? Survey! This kind of reminds me of Mass Effect. Remember those surveys? Oh, I love that part of the game. Nice, relaxing. You just drive around and do some surveys. It's a little bit more harrowing here. System sensors indicate that the extra dimensional exploration vessel follow exited FDL abruptly on the outskirts of the radio system. Oh, this is those guys that were time travelers. It would appear that the comet, not the pulsar, was responsible for the Calatella's demise. <laughs> See, it's that grandfather's paradox. Our effort to warn them of their fate, we seem to have caused it. Both wrecks now haunt the, <laughs> the pulsar. Whoops! Oh well, it's okay. We get plus seven to Parima, so it's good. <laughs> Which one's Parima? Oh wow. Oh, nice. Oh, that knocked a whole month off of Cola Gun. <laughs> yeah, we killed those guys, but it's okay. Because it knocked a month off my Cola Gun. Come on, not to cut the vibe. Money. What the hell is that word? Just a pop 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 I feel like I should know what that word means. Alexa. What is A U T O C H T H O N? Okay. So 
We're basically a monument to native people. Learn something new every day. I feel like an anthropological context. Recon pass there completed. Two, five, and four. So we get two energies. See, that's only a two, so not that big of a deal. Now we've got a lot of influence now, so it might not be a bad idea to create another construction ship. Probably unnecessary. Uh, but let's see, what is the upkeep on these things? I think they cost one. It's kind of hard to see where, but I'm pretty sure that counts as a ship. <clears throat> I have to pay a little bit every turn for every month for these ships. If I had another construction ship, I could be out here. Go ahead and do it. Give me something to do, to play with. Almost got that monument. Okay, now we. Got one culture worker. What's this? Cultist marauders encountered. Yep, see what I'm telling you? It didn't take long. Cultist fleet loyal to the Great Disciples has been sighted in the Jezebel system. This time, however, their numbers include a strange ship of an unfamiliar design. Taking evasive action. Oh man, it sucks. <clears throat> Alright. So. We got a cruiser. That's what the little three dots mean. No, it's a battleship. I thought three was for the cruisers, but anyway. Okay. Battleship and a Corvette. Now, if this one can't get away, let's see. I could lose my scientist here. And it's ahead of research. Let's watch this one very closely. Okay, she got away. There you go. Now, there is a thing you can do. If you notice a situation like that, you can quickly move the scientist out, <coughs> take him off the ship. You know, it feels a little bit uh, cheesy to do that, but <laughs> you don't want to lose a head of research. This one's only level two, but still, that would hurt. It really sucks when it's like a level five, level six, high level counselor. Okay, so we need to get 457, and we're a long ways from that. So hopefully that thing doesn't move. Let's go somewhere safer with you. I guess we can get away from that. <laughs> Let's see, as soon as we can get a decent sized fleet. Head over. No, we're not gonna wait 107 months. Science Division report success. Okay, now we got our food buff. Oh, okay. This is uh, what I was telling you earlier about the fleet command limit. Uh, so this will let us put 20 more uh, ships, or 20 more units worth of ships, uh, however you want to say that, uh, into the fleets, uh, which is a really nice thing. You, you, you need to have a big fleet if you want to have any chance of surviving. Uh, this one's okay, you know, it gives you a little bit more trade value in each station. I mean, you know, one of the problems with building a station is there's a lot of times that there's nothing good to build. Uh, so this is just something that is not useless, <laughs> but it's kind of limited. Only two trade value for each trade hub. Uh, so you've got a big trading station with six hubs. Well, that's what? Uh, 12 extra trade value. Not, not a huge thing. Uh, we don't really need to worry about clearing these blockers yet. Reminds me, I never cleared the blocker from uh, Unity. But a lot of times a planet will have like this here. I won't be able to do anything with these districts until I clear those uh, uh, blockers. And sometimes they're blocking something really cool that you really wish you could remove. Like it might be blocking a resource. Uh, so it's not a terrible, terrible idea to go ahead and grab this one. But I think this one's probably the best option. Again, I don't know when it might appear again. <laughs> it's absolutely essential that I have it. Uh, I don't need it immediately, but man, when you need it, you need it. <laughs> so go ahead and click it. And those are going to take a long freaking time. Wow, that one's taking forever too, but... Okay. 
Uh, so back to this. Now you see that my amenities have gone down to negative two, probably because I've lost all my clerks. Now they've gone on to do uh, culture work. <laughs> uh, so now I'm starting to suffer from lack of amenities. So what can I do about it? Well, one thing is I could distribute luxury goods if I had enough, but you know, I've almost got enough. I just need 50 more. And that'll keep people happy for 10 years. So I might try that. Or I could just try to get more clerks. Remember, they give you three amenities each. So again, they're not totally useless. It's just probably want, <laughs> if it's a choice between surviving and having a little bit more amenities, uh, you probably want to go with that other option. So we're not going to get another guy for 20 months. Uh, so a couple things I could do. I could make another commercial zone. And then add more clerks, but I don't have enough clerks as it is. Uh, uh, or enough people to fill those roles. Uh, hollow theaters. Uh, luxury residences is an interesting option. A lot of people don't ever build these. They don't like them, but it's just kind of... There's no employees associated with this. It just gives you amenities and housing. And you can upgrade it later. So sometimes I'll build these if there's a place that's just really got crappy amenities. But, yeah, there's a lot more fun stuff you could build. So I think I might just ride this out. And as soon as I get the uh, uh, luxury goods, I'll put that in there. This is a temporary fix until I can get some more people with resources to build it. Speaking of, oh, I can't even build a star base. Oh, see, I'm suffering from lack of alloys as well as consumer goods. But now, look at this. Since it's negative two... Happiness is down. Still relatively happy, but I took a little hit there to my stability, looks like. Mainly happiness is down. This isn't that problematic. Recon pass completed. If your stability gets really low, like under 20, then you start running into insurrections and revolutions. Oh my god, that could just totally destroy your game if suddenly all your. You got this big. Uh, re uh, big revolt going on and lose the resources the planets and systems were producing and for whatever reason the computer likes to give a massive incredible fleets out of nowhere suddenly you know you don't even have battleships in your own civilization this this one little planet that revolted somehow they've got a fleet of 15 battleships i'm exaggerating a little bit trust me just don't want that to happen let's go ahead those, the mines first, and the research stations. And we can, uh, it's gonna be a little while since we're only making two. And see, this is there's always a trade off, right? I made those culture workers, which that's nice, but it kind of hamstrung my uh, industrials or my artisans are having to give all those consumer goods to those folks do their culture work. Well, I feel like I learn a lot about governance and <laughs> economics by playing this game. Like, it sounds good, right? Oh, yeah, we want we want this big culture, uh, all these, these museums and culture workers and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's going to be, that's going to cost resources and those people could be doing something else. <laughs> I can build a star base, but I gotta get this. <laughs> okay. Now I can get this, boost survey speed, or... Now this is one that I always go back and forth on. Uh, so the research alternatives, remember that when I get to pick a technology? It's really nice to have a lot of options. Uh, it's just, the worst thing is when you got three bad options, which happens sometimes, and you gotta waste a whole cycle trying to get them shuffle. Uh, plus, if there's that one technology you really know you need, uh, this will give you a lot better chance of getting it. Plus, you get an extra scientist, so you can have a whole other science vessel equipped. Uh, plus, all the scientists start uh, at skill level plus one, so that's great. On the other hand, I got three people trying to do some survey, and it's really the best time to be surveying is early game, because later everything will be surveyed stuff useless so it's like use it or lose it basically 
So I like to go with that one. But I think you can make a strong case for going with this one too. So it's, I'm not sure ultimately which is better. But I feel like since we got so much exploration left to do, plus I got Map the Stars on, so I'm feeling okay with that short. Recon pass completed. You know, I didn't even say this, but you know when that does come up, I could open up a whole new you know, thing and start working on it. Not finish the tree, but I think it's better to finish the trees because then we can open these up. And when I get to that point, if I get to that point, uh, you can see it's a whole other set of really interesting decisions you had to make. Okay, I'm starting to see some other planets popping up here. So you notice I got Alpine. There's another continental world, but it's guarded. And then I got a tundra world. So you can colonize a planet that's tundra. Basically what it means is that the, if you put regular humans there, they're going to have to use up a lot more resources to survive. So it's not going to be as productive. It's going to be expensive to build there. Uh, but there's ways around it. Uh, we could eventually terraform those planets. It's expensive, time consuming, but you can make them whatever you like. Or, a more interesting option is uh, when we start to get into some genetics, we can make different kinds of humans. Uh, so we might make a human, uh, maybe a Minnesotan human, <laughs> that can thrive uh, in a tundra world. Uh, so there's all sorts of fun stuff, and different, there's different strategies that you might employ uh, long term. But you probably don't want to put people there now, because then you would just spend all your money just trying to keep them alive. Black hole. Those are great for dark matter. We'll need that, but a lot later in the game. Looks like everybody's staying busy. Oh, great! Now they're attacking. Warships belonging to the great disciples have been encountered in the Tay system. Taking evasive action. Where's the Tay system? See, this is starting to get serious, and we don't have the means to make it more ship track now. Unless I want to buy metal, which I think that might be a good idea. So I'm loath to do it, 30%, but my god. We've got to do something. Go ahead and make some more ships. That only gave me one freaking Corvette. Is that possibly true? Oh, it's a full strength. Yeah, so let's go ahead and bump these numbers up. We can have up to 24. Let's see, I'll do this. Really my, well, I guess I'm a long ways from my coil gun. So it doesn't really matter so much. These would be kind of equally balanced. Let's try, let's get it up to the, I'm not sure if this just goes in the order that it is here. I don't see a way to move these up and down. I'm not sure how it prioritizes, prioritizes which one to build. Let's see, that's 13. I think the cap is 30, and then we got 24 total. Let's try. Let's try this. Now, obviously, we're not going to make this many, but as soon as we get up enough, take these guys out at least. They are going to put some pain on me. Pretty soon, I'm gonna take them out. System reconnaissance completed. Okay, so here's one this weapon trails anomaly. Weapon radiation indicative of military spacecraft. So you see, this one is challenging. So it's gonna take 250 turns before that gets made. 250 uh, uh, days. Now what I could do is switch her out if somebody here had a, you know, a bonus to anomaly research. And that doesn't cost you anything, there's no delays, you can switch them back and forth however you like. Now, so that's an option, but I think the best thing is just to leave it be for now, we can always come back to it later, if someone were able to claim it. So I want to just keep doing my surveys. Nervous about these grave, what are they grave cultist marauders, grave disciples. Don't want to leave those guys alone. Construction complete. 
fly over here and start destroying crap. That could be the end of the game. To be quite honest, quite honest with you, not exaggerating at all. If you let them come to you and you aren't ready, well, let's just say you'll learn a painful lesson. <laughs> you wouldn't mind that. You know, I might. Well, they can only make one at a time. So. Oh, this is. Okay, yet another dimension of this game is. Sometimes you find more primitive civilizations. And so these guys are in the early industrial age. Well, what's cool about these, and there's a, I think a Star Trek movie about this, is you can make these observation posts and study them, and you get some awesome technologies by doing this. Some of the best in the game. So we definitely want to make sure we get that going. Plus there's a lot of fun story stuff that happens as they uh, progress through technology. So it's not too far. Hopefully we'll be able to get that. Really, I think the archaeology wins and anything like this, if you can just grab it, you know, prioritize it, get it quick, because the AI will come along and snap them up and then they'll do the archaeology. Uh, then you won't be able to, you know, do, uh, you won't be able to get those relics. So I really try to make a beeline for those those. Got enough to make another building or district, but I think we just need to wait. We've got lots of jobs, lots of group jobs, and kind of low on amenities anyway. Let's see. News of the barbarian creatures exhibiting rudimentary intelligence and so called civilization. The Fallen Gar has not received all immunity. You see, I like that you get different flavor depending on what your ethic is. So I guess if I was playing the Federation, you know, it have totally different text. Most humans seemingly prefer to avoid the alien creatures. <laughs> uh, you know, I should tell you this real quick. So, you notice how these planets, oh, well, that one's still a colony. Like here, if I go to population, it says growing humans. Uh, so, as a dictator, <laughs> uh, these guys are the only ones that can be leaders. So if you, you might have a bunch of other species, but uh, they'll be indentured servants. You, you can set it up however you like. By default, uh, the way I'm playing here, they'll be indentured servants. They won't be eligible for enforcer positions. Uh, they can't be police, they can't be retainers, they can't be leaders, rulers. Uh, so what you might end up happening is there's just not enough humans to go around. What happens is you'll eventually be getting uh, people from different civilizations coming. And you might be growing them instead of your humans because they're, I don't know exactly how this algorithm picks. It's supposed to pick the best, you know, species for that planet, I think is the idea. With a little bit of randomness. Uh, but what, you can, what you can do to fix that is come in here and say, just make humans. But then that will limit your pop group by 10%. So, so what I would recommend and what I found is be very careful when you're resettling you want to have at least a few planets where there's just humans, <laughs> just spitting out humans. And try not to get other species here, because then you'll be competing with them um, for demographics. Just something to think about. Mm -hmm. I have enough. 503. So he's only got 250, so that's twice the... Uh, Fleets, but let's just go ahead. I like overwhelming odds because, man, my guys tend to suck. <laughs> At least starting out, I seem to always lose, so I really just want overwhelming numbers. I mean, I've seen, I've gone up against fleets and had twice the fleet, and they still somehow either, maybe not have killed me completely, but did enough damage for We have claimed a new world. Get hurt. Anomaly found. Oh, Stuff pile up. Okay, got a new colony. Check on that. Another challenging thing. This is a atmospheric object. Sounds intriguing, but we can always come back to it. Okay, let's look at our first colony. Yay! Tagira Prime. 
let's see, there's a lot of uh, agricultural districts here, which is really good. Uh, that's uh, the way I like to play, <laughs> is to make as many people as possible. So you need food, kind of helpful uh, for that purpose. But we got 19 food coming in, got a decent reserve, so I'm not saying that's urgent, but I do want to think very hard about this, how many districts there are here, because a lot of planets do not have anywhere nearly uh, this number of agriculture. And if I really want to specialize this and take advantage of it, you basically you're better off having a planet like this, just putting all your agriculture here with the buildings that uh, stimulate agriculture on all, focus all here, rather than an agriculture here, ag there, ag there, ag everywhere. You know, mix it up like that. You get more bang for your buck specializing. But it's early game and we really need more uh, metals and alloys and we've got a decent number of districts here. So one thing we could do is pop a industrial district down. And that would certainly be reasonable. Or we could think, well I'll deal with a delay because I really want food coming in. No, I'm gonna need it eventually. We could even make a, a building, I suppose. <laughs> but there's no real rush with this because we get that started. Usually that's automatic. Maybe I jump the gun a little bit. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, let me go ahead and do this. Sprawling slums, because that'll give me one extra population. And I should take care of this. Okay, back to this. <clears throat> so we got a colonist position. And that will yeah. Food and uh <laughs> they do cost a lot, don't they? But that's a good thing. Might as well wait until we've got this full before we go try to build extra stuff here. Because again, there won't be people to work there anyway. Alright, that's good. I like that we have our colony going. It's a nice colony, lots of room, and lots of agriculture possibilities. He's up to 570. Let's see about adding a little bit more. You can see the breakdown here. We've got energy ships, kinetic, one artillery. Things looking okay. Ready that slum. Basically, it's a free pop. 300. Units, not much to spend to get a whole population. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Finally! <clears throat> so that's research stations. So all of those little things they've been building here like this, that'll go up 10%. <laughs> we get the second iteration of it right away, of course. So it's tempting, because again, you don't know when this thing might pop up again. It's 10% across the board. Uh, it does mean that I would be missing out on some really awesome stuff like fusion, improved reflectors, or this one. What is this? Oh, so this one is, uh, that one's just research stations. This one's research speed. This is across the whole board. So researchers and uh, stations, if I understand this correctly. That's a 5% boost. And if I want to get a little more granular, I can come up here and look at my research see well what's actually where am I getting my research so right now I get 12 from stations and only eight from jobs so that would uh, you know 12 more you know 10% more <laughs> sort of figure it out I guess now the fusion reactor this is a really really important uh, ship component it's the batteries it's the power so it doesn't do you any good to have improved deflectors, for example, if you don't have enough power, enough juice to run it. So this is always, if you got an option to do the reactors, it's difficult to pass it up. You know, I'd put this over the deflectors. But, you know, if we can survive long enough, this one will ultimately be better, because it means we get all, you know, everything will be faster. It's just an initial delay. It's kind of delayed gratification. So I've already got some, uh, I guess I should tell you what this means. So somehow or another, I got to start on this one. So what this means is this card will stay here. So 
So next, if I do the research station output miniature containment fields, if I choose this one now, when it's finished, and I come back and get another set of cards, this will still be. So basically, this one's not going anywhere. So I know it's safe. I can look at it later. This one, if I don't click it now, it might not show up for 10, 20 years. <laughs> might be five or six cycles where we get the chance again. And it's it's a pretty good one. So this is another very very tough call. I'm gonna have to go with it. I feel like though, just long term, I know it'll be better. You, you're gonna find lots of research stations. That made decision made. I guess we'll see, won't we? <laughs> Construction complete. Another research station completed. Now we have to decide where to go next. So up here, this is interesting because this system has an alloy planet. So usually almost every system will just have energy, maybe some minerals, maybe some research. It's rare to find one that gives you alloys. So again, if I want to make alloys, the only way usually is to uh, make one of those industrial ones, forge you know, equipment, buildings for it. It's expensive. This is basically, you got to have minerals to turn into alloys, right? And so this is it's better than it looks. You might think, oh, it's just two alloys. Uh, but you think of all the minerals it would take and the workers to make that just free sitting there. So that is very tempting. Of course, we've got another archaeology site here. I told you already how valuable those are. Don't need it immediately, but definitely don't want the computer to come in here and take it. Uh, this one over here, this little ring, whatever that symbol is here, is another very good choice because it's a trade, trade value. And it's within two systems of my home planet. So if I were to pick this, I would pick up this two trade value. You might be wondering, what is trade value? <laughs> it's this number here. Basically, it's money. It's just 22 money. Uh, what's different about it than energy, there's different bonuses that affect it. Things that will give you better uh, trade value, obviously. <coughs> you can have more traders that will uh, ways to get the percentages up so it can scale up really nicely uh, oh, oh I forgot what else I was going to tell you about so if when I go into policies uh, yeah wealth creation so right now the trade value just gives me gold but as I get I don't know if it's technologies or uh, traditions but one of them give me some options here so instead of just gold maybe I get one or half a gold piece and then half a unity piece we'll split it that way I think the other one is maybe alloys consumer goods you know there's ways you can split this up divvy it up so it basically just makes trade very flexible there's things that get you options you might like <laughs> I just like cash money <laughs> I feel like if I got the cash uh, I could buy the other stuff Anyway, that's a good choice. Plus, there's a little science there. But I'm gonna since this guy's closer and it would take time to go down there. Let's just go ahead and jump up here. You can't see. I don't even have enough metal to make the damn uh, star base. And we can have this guy move over there and pick that up. Recon pass completed. You know, the black holes are really good because there are unique resources. Just you can only get from them. But that's a long ways off in the game. It's not going to be useful now. But that floor engineering would be great. What happened? Uh oh. Oh, that's the. Uh, never mind. That's the free FTA. Oh, I, I hate meeting the computer. It's always the worst month of this game. It's like, uh oh. We're not alone anymore. We've got competition. Where do I want to go with this? <coughs> detailed survey of Escon 2 is revealed that although it's currently unsuitable for life, oh yeah, I know what this is. So basically, remember when I was showing you these traditions? And I mentioned these ascension points. 
Blocker cleared. Uh, one of these. Let's see which one of those. Detox. So you have to have climate restoration technology, but you could choose this as one of your perks later in the game. And you're going to find a lot of these toxic worlds, sometimes dozens. I've had as many as 50 or 60. And I couldn't do anything with, can't colonize them. They're just sitting there, you can't terraform it. But if you pick this, you know, suddenly you might have, you know, two or three times more planets you can colonize after you terraform them. Of course, it's, it's a little bit involved, but, it, you know, it's a, it's a fun thing uh, to colonize all those new planets. And we just found. And I've found a whole bunch of things. Okay, we can't, again, can't build yet, but might as well scoot over there and be in position. Again. All right, 641. You know, I, I just... <laughs> I want one more... I want one more shot. Anomaly found. It's a colossal impact crater. It's something big collided with the surface of this crater. Let's make sure I don't have any. Oh, that's all a long ways off. Let's see. I think we got to buy a little bit of metal. So it's 25 for 146. I wonder if you get a, a bulk discount. <laughs> Never done the math on this. The base price will change depending on the amount of units. Of course it does. This is just how clever they are. So I guess the best thing would be to buy the biggest quantity all at once. That's probably the worst deal. It's kind of like uh, going to the gas station for <coughs> a gallon of milk versus Walmart. Uh, I'm not going to go. It's going to be not in that big of a hurry. What the... Sure wouldn't hurt my feelings to get more metal. That's what this guy's for. Do I want to do that first? That would mean waiting a lot longer for my... Ooh. No, let's just do this. I think one more should be enough. Then we'll go to that guy. His great disciples. System reconnaissance completed. Yeah, here's the dark matter. So this is probably around that black hole. But there's all these things they call, yeah, rare resources. These are really important. There's a lot of special things you can only do if you have these, certain kinds of buildings. I've already got some gross now. Not sure how that happened. Uh, this one lets you build mega structures faster. Just all kinds of fun stuff. Upgrades, upgraded buildings require it. Really powerful edicts. And the nice thing about these is there's no resource storage required. So eventually I'll have 15,000 consumer goods and I'll have to build some resource silos, etc. Uh, with these, I could have infinite amount. It's really good if you run out of storage space and you're like, oh, I got, I'm capped out on my energy credits. What do I do? Well, you could buy a bunch of this stuff. It's not the best solution, but at least it's there and you can use it eventually. Kind of a store of value. It's kind of like Bitcoin, I guess. It's a store of value, any of them. But it's also nice to get collecting it as soon as you possibly can, because then by the time you need it, you have plenty of it. We don't have the means yet uh, to make that or to start collecting it. But since we've discovered it, it will prioritize it the technology tree, so it'll be more likely to pop up there. I think dark matter is a very in-game kind of thing. So it'll be a while, but it's good to have. Massive crater appears to be the result of a collision with distortion. The crash site. Disintegrated on the impact theory cannot be just a little boost to our tech. And then we got a, another level up. Okay. Oh, definitely this one. I 
guess kind of a tough call. She's not a counselor, so this would be useless unless I'm trying to get that next generation. But I like this 10% anomaly discovery chance because that just means that she'd be even better at surveying and more likely to find cool stuff, and resources, and just a good thing to have. It's a force multiplier. I need 43 metal to make these stations. I'm probably going to have to just buy them. So you can see that clerk came in and boosted my amenities a little bit. So I'm not the best use of a population. The only other way I could get my amenities up at this point would be to need to build a luxury residence for that thing here. Let's see if we can hold off on that. What I might do is move some of these people here if I can get some of this stuff. We've got 15 months until that's ready. CNS travelers manage to isolate a residual ion. Recon pass completed. In the Escon system, identical to the one. Oh, so we're getting closer to this chrysanthemum. Must have originated from the highest. I think our ship was called the chrysanthemum, and the other ship is called the hyacinth. Somebody must be a gardener. Century old. Track it on outbound trajectory towards a previously uncharted star. Isn't this just great science fiction? I mean, I love thinking about these scenarios. These fast times have gone by. Anomaly found. I wish you wouldn't do that. It scares me. <laughs> Life signs coming from somewhere within the interior of the asteroid. Some more anomalies. Let's see, where was that highest? Oh, there? Is that where that is? No. Oh, it's way... What the? Wait, what? What system is that? Oh, that's way... I'm never going to get there. <laughs> I guess that's one of the problems of playing on a huge map. You know, I guess they got way separated. Oh, I'm probably never going to find that. And I guess eventually. Yeah, it'll be a long time before I find out what happened to the highest. I guess you don't have to worry about that spoiler. Okay, let's go ahead and keep up our surveys. This one's my archaeologist, so... I just need to remember when it comes time to do some archaeology that I have her doing it. She's got the bonus. <laughs> This guy is 710. That's 500. We should be able to take this. Let's see, which one do I want first? I guess we'll take her out first. Assuming we can do this. I might get my butt kicked. That would, that would suck. You might get to hear me cuss. <laughs> we get wiped out. Because that would really stink. That's looking good. Yeah, I think we could go for another building or another district. So one of the things I've been thinking about, one of the things I always think about with this game is, if you have lots and lots of money, you kind of got everything else. Because you can always, yes, a bit of a markup, but you can always buy whatever else you need. Whereas if you don't have enough money, oh my god, that's the worst. So that's, I'm always tempted to just go with another commercial zone. Just so I know I've got plenty of cash. Or, you know, I could do the same thing, same approach with a generator, but this is kind of like a waste to me. Since, uh, again, this is my home base. It's one of the few places where I can just go crazy with, without having to worry about piracy. Or, I could go uh, with a research station, research lab. And that kind of, you know what, that, I don't need to explain why that would be useful. Get those technologies a lot faster. Uh, or a uh, stronghold, it's not a bad choice. This makes my planet a lot better defended, for one thing. Uh, adds some stability, uh, this number here. And it gives me more naval or naval capacity. So 
So instead of just making 24 ships, it would give me, I guess, uh, what, six more or eight more? So not bad. Uh, so these are all good choices. Sometimes I go with this administrative office. The rationale being that this is kind of my home base it's where you probably want to make it's called Unity, you know, it kind of makes sense that you're making Unity here. But I can sort of do this anyway. The only real reason I can think of to put the administrative offices here is that you get this 10% resource bonus, plus I can get my uh, the bonus from this. Let's see what that bonus is. 5.7. You know, I thought that gave you a bonus to your uh, to your unity production. 20% more something. Let me just make sure I know what I'm talking about before giving you the wrong advice. 10% right. governing ethics attraction. So that's good for stability. Citizen population happiness 1.2, and it gives unity. I could have sworn this. Yeah, look, unity from jobs five percent. Okay, so that would include the administrators. They make unity as well. So this, if I if I know what I'm talking about, this stacks with this, stacks with that. So that's quite a bit of nice unity bonus. <sighs> or <laughs> you could you could think about it this way. Uh, this is the only place where you're going to get a 10% bonus for something like metallurgy. I think I'm going to have to go... You know, if I do research labs, though, this is going to kill my consumer. You know, this will go negative, and I'll be scrambling to ever have enough commercial goods. So what I might end up doing... If I can wait... <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I'm thinking. If I went ahead and made a commercial zone here, or an industrial zone here, uh, let me think about this. So I got 50 minerals coming in. If I put another industrial zone down, that'll take 12 of those away. One, I don't usually build the buildings that boost your artisan and metallurgy here. I think that might be the best choice because the people are already here. I wouldn't have to move them. So we'll get that 10% bonus. I don't like losing my precious district. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just try it. I don't normally like to build a lot of industrial districts on my home place because these slots here are so precious. And to really get the full benefit, you need the alloy foundries and the civilian industries to you know, have the planet focused on making that. So it's a little bit inefficient. I mean, I have done it before where I put an alloy thing down and a civilian industry down. I said the heck with it, we're going to go with this. Yeah, it's two slots, I hate to lose them. But you can... Those basically double your production. That's why I'm saying it's nice to have a forge planet or a factory planet so you don't have to have both buildings. Can he produce? Yeah. It's going to bring in two metal. And then we got to wait. So I think the all those mining station bonuses that I picked up that'll make an impact on that, so why don't we make a note of this so we can verify it. Look at this first. The asteroid has crystal growths. These growths have turned out to be self-sustaining and caused by the crystals taking in the ambient radiation. The crystals themselves are pri primarily made out of sucrose and could potentially even be edible. Ha! Oh, this is interesting. Interesting. What? Wait, what? Where is this? So I can get four more research or three food. <laughs> you know, I 
it makes more sense to get the research, but just for pure roleplay value. I mean, the idea of uh, mining food from an asteroid is pretty fun. Uh, You know, sometimes I just go with a wacky option just to see what happens. You know, we could uh, just move some people from Unity on, on to here if we want to. So my big choice with this one is do I want to try to make this a Recon general pass planet, completed. immediately try to specialize it? But what do I want to do? I want food. You know, one thing I was thinking about last night is you might start a planet off kind of being a jack of all trades planet just because you have to. And then later, as you get more planets, you can sort of reconfigure things and just do it after the fact. So it's not that big a deal to change. Uh, you make a farm, you can change it to something else later, or vice versa. It costs a little, a little money, a little resources, but it's not a deal breaker. Okay, let's watch this little battle. Let's slow it down so we can really save her, hopefully. I like the look of my fleet there. So yeah, this should we should see how my strategy plays out. We've got some energies. Should be at least one of the uh, yeah, there's one of the kinetic ones. Fleet action underway. Let's see if they're gonna be able to actually see their weapons. See, like this guy's firing something already. I think that's the missiles from the artillery. But sometimes I just make everybody have missiles. The idea being just kill them before I even get close. The downside of that is if they do close, then you're screwed. Those missiles take forever to recharge. Like I'm making him out. Jean Paul Moreau. Can't see his battle is interrupted by. <laughs> okay, this one will give me a research station output bonus increased by 20%. Uh, research from star based constructions. Those are kind of rare, like black hole stations. And I get an edict for research subsidies. All good stuff. Oh, research alternatives plus one. Get an extra scientist. Actually, we looked at this one before. I think this one. Now we can. This edict tends to be more expensive. Yeah. See, so this would put me over my cap if I take this. And I'm only bringing in 17 unity. And it. You gotta don't just click it mindlessly because it does cost 50 right off the top. Let's see. Alexa, what is 40 minus 16? 40 minus 16. I got 24. So that would put me <laughs> in a negative. So I've got to get my unity up or turn off map the stars and switch to this one. Which I love to do. So we'll just have to not take advantage of that right. We did get the other bonuses. Watch that click in. I want to watch my battle. This is a glorious Construction thing. complete. Two really massive fleets. Sometimes I've had five or six fleets all just go there. A massive battle. It is a sight. System reconnaissance completed. Oh, get it. Get it. Interrupt me in the middle of a battle. Okay. It's okay. Oh, we need to get, get her looking at some more systems. We're really getting a long ways from the net. We definitely need to look at that system. 
matter of fact, why don't you do that? Yeah. Yeah, got it. Uh-oh, there's debris, and I'm a long ways from it. Now this has a timeout on it, and you really need to get to it, because, oh, it sucks when you don't get there in time. Hopefully, it's almost worth making another sign. If this was a long ways off, I think I'll be able to make it a problem. Let's see if I can get an estimate. Usually it tells you how long it's going to take to get there. Not seeing it there. Well, anyway, you, there's some way you can see how long it... Oh, there we go. So she get there in 166 days, and it does a timeout until 700 or 1800 days, basically. So that'll be fine. But yeah, sometimes you get like a bunch of debris, and your science ships are a long ways away. You don't make it in time. So it's a good idea to have science ships not too far away from your battleships if you want to war. Three, uh, so you didn't take any hull damage or hole point damage, just shields. So again, the nice thing about shields is I don't have to go back to base and repair. They'll just repair automatically. So I can go ahead and go down here and take care of this guy. And then we've got another continental world here. Maybe get some surveys out. So all in all, very successful game. Well, I'll have to come back here and do these anomalies. In fact, do I? No. Yeah, when I get the uh, other scientist, I think we'll make another science ship at that point. One other thing I'm while well, thinking about it. Now you'll notice I've got uh, I can hire two more officials or another commander. I don't really need them per se, but I could. Uh, right now, this is just being led by a sector sector official. So you can see the difference there. It's basically half benefits. So I get a few benefits from being in the same sector as my other planet there. But it would be better to have a dedicated uh, uh, official. Then I would get more benefits. Plus, uh, they'd be leveling up so that when inevitably I need another official, maybe I get another system that I need somebody to govern. Or if somebody dies and they need to be replaced. But then I'd already have somebody kind of leveled up, ready to take over. So it's not a bad idea, I think, uh, to just stick governors on some of these. You don't really need, they're not that important, but just, just to, again, be having them get ready. So when you do need it, when you have it available, you just instantly swap it over that person. Because otherwise, the worst thing is when you lose a council member here, and it's somebody with tons of, uh, of these bonuses, and you got nobody to take over. You have to start with a level one <laughs> council. Oh, you don't want to. Start base, and we'll pick up that two trade there. Can't wait to get this one. Uh, you might wonder, why don't you just click here? Matter of fact, I could, well, it's already cool. So. I kind of hate to waste this to show you this, but it's cheaper to build a star base that's already connected. If I tried to build it here, it'd probably cost twice, if not three or four times as much influence because it's not connected to the network here. Just something to think about. You might have wondered, why don't I just zip straight to the best possible place? Five more months and I'll get colonists completed. I have to think about what Anomaly found. Life signs coming from somewhere beneath the barren life of the surface. I always feel like if it's a routine thing, what is it, what's that seven habits of, how many habits of successful people? It's like a strategy. I forget what book it's in. One of those self help books. And they're basically like, if it's something quick and you can just get it done, now just go ahead and do it. Uh, that's, instead of trying to make a big list. Or time, spend more time trying to organize uh, than you would just getting that little task done quickly. 
That's the way I kind of fill up a routine thing like that. Boom, knock it out, get the benefit. You will uh, not be surveying while that's going on. It's probably better than that to come all the way back later. And who knows, maybe that, just because it's routine, might still be a really good uh, outcome. Let's we'll see what happened. Not inhabited. It's not uninhabited, bro. Crawling with giant alien arthropoids. Ant arthropoids. Robes we deploy return skittering shadows and large mandibles. Oh, that's creepy. I should like to be an incredibly complex data bank. To get to the data bank, we would have to go through that cluster of many legged defenders. Oh. Look at this choice. So I think we have to make it now, too. <sighs> Hyperlane breach points. What is that? I'm not even sure what that is. Is there a way I can... There's some way I think you can freeze that in place so you can hover over it. But... I'm not sure what hyperlane breach points means. It's a 50% chance Miroslav dies. <laughs> oh, that's my... Of course it's my head of research, and of course it's the guy with a great research speed bonus. Hmm. Okay, do I want to play it safe or go for this hyperlane reach points thing? I don't even know what it is. Or a 50 influence, which would be, again, extremely useful. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Ah! Dang! Oh, that hurt. Oh! That's when you wish you were on Iron Man mode. <laughs> oh! Ah! Oh, that sucks. Oh, I can't even afford a replacement. Jesus. Oh, it's gonna take me forever to replace that scientist. These people aren't even... They don't even have a single perk. This is what I'm talking about, though. You just, That sucked. But could have been a good reward. I guess I'll never know now what that technology was. And I just got this science ship just sitting there. That's uh, Stellaris. <laughs> At least in Iron Man mode. You better believe if I were in Iron Man mode, that would be a reload. Construction complete. You know, sometimes it happens. I mean, that's not that bad, but I mean, sometimes if something happens that's just so incredibly crappy, you just say, the hell with this, I quit and start a fresh game. I mean, I've done that many times, actually. I've gotten about, maybe even two or three times further along than this, and just something happens and it's just so terrible, such terrible luck, I'm just like, this wasn't meant to be. This is even going to take longer for my uh, tradition to come in. Some kind of silicon based life form in heaven to vast network of autonomous beings. Parent service of that. Fleet action underway. There have been in situations like Maybe my whole, maybe this little fleet that shouldn't have been able to kill me just somehow and just, just that bad of rolls, I guess. And just, you lose your fleet, and then at the same time, oh, here comes the AI. Oh, they're invading. I mean, things can go south really, really quick. Look at this. I'm not even going to be able to. Well, I got, at least I can finally replace it. Well, the good news is we've already got a guy here with research speed, or a uh, lady, I should say. So we can 
swap out the... I'm glad they don't put any kind of cap on this, so you can just instantly do it. It is level 1 instead of level 2, but I feel like that's a, that's a fairly hard-to-get trait, so I'm really glad I was able to pick that up. Just sucks. That was level 2. Now I'm down to level 1. It's, it's not the end of the world. We will survive. Just, you, you gotta think, man. What if it had gone the other way? I don't even know what that technology was. I don't even, I'm not even sure what that is. Now I'm just never gonna know. I'm pretty sure I've never seen that technology pop up. I could be mistaken about that. Okay. What do we want to build here on Tagira Prime? I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for a little while longer. <laughs> want to be forever with this. Okay, so I got 18 food coming in. That's pretty good. Got a nice reserve. Looking pretty good on all my basics. I really feel like we need to start trying to get our industry in order, so I'm going to go for that next. Let's look at Unity. I might have overdone it with two, actually. So don't these take yeah, 12 each? So that's going to knock my mineral production down to little bit of nothing but hopefully by the time we're really starting to hurt <laughs> I'll have some more of these uh, construction complete mining stations oh, I need to explore there oh there's another yet another good trade look we ought to have some yeah, 30 trade coming in so we're doing construction okay complete money. It's usually my first and foremost concern is money. It's the worst thing is when you have to when you run out of energy, you have to sell everything else just to try to stay afloat, and you have nothing else to. Oh, we don't want to be there. Battle debris secured. Look at this, we got another planet. System reconnaissance completed. Still looking for the high at something. I thought it said it was way over here somewhere. Getting some pretty good systems. Yeah, this will be fun when I get this built. You're gonna like that. Okay. Still, I'm gonna need a lot more metal than this to build that colony ship. Not to mention the. Uh, oh, see, here's the. When I studied the debris, you get really cool stuff. So it's 10% progress on these combat computers, which again means that's going to be locked, so that'll be available every time. And then some nice points of physics. That's why I always make a beeline for the debris, because you can really save some research time. What? Oh, we got rid of them. Where? <laughs> what? Is that the base? No. Where? Where am I? Are you indicating? What system? Where is this? Oh, here? What is going on? Taking evasive action. Kill that scientist. Let's see, we gotta. Looks like they're not gonna go to Ford. Man, these guys are everywhere. <clears throat> Good thing I built that fleet up. <coughs> Probably worth it to even build another Corvette. Need to get these uh, systems built. Build a ship next. I'm gonna need a colony ship. Anomaly found. Atmospheric anomaly. <coughs> Whenever I think about battle anomaly, debris secured. TNG, the next generation. There. Every episode is about an anomaly. <coughs> well, not moving down there. You know, eventually you can get these uh, cloaking devices for your 
science ships. And they can just move in anywhere. Don't have to worry about that. Of course, sometimes it can be detected. Now, you can't put those cloaking devices on every ship for some reason. Just there's a couple ones you can put it on. I don't know. It must be just gameplay. Gameplay balance. Construction complete. You gotta put it on every ship. So I didn't even need to build a station for that trade. There's another two trade coming in. Yep. Looking good. Yeah. My uh, Minister of Defense is getting a good workout. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't want him to lose because, oh my god. Construction complete. That would be two good counselor traits coming up. See, now I can build observation posts. And that is really neat. Anomaly found. Uh, hard. Basically, when we run into the AI, you'll see the borders, and I won't be able to survey anymore or expand anymore. Unless I go to war. So I won't be doing any surveying anymore. So then I think it's a good time to come back and pick up the Arctic. Fleet action uh, underway. Anomalies that were hard or challenging. Cool picture. Ragged planes of shadow drift across Jizume's face. Not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere. reading a science fiction story about, I think it was uh, some creatures that lived in the clouds in the sky of Jupiter or something like that. That's what I used to do. Construction <laughs> complete. Right, I guess Earl Grey is not the best for <laughs> uh, We have defeated the cultist forces in Counter Circle. These engagements have raised a number of alarm engagements. The great disciples have been Pulling far more ships than they could possibly have been built in the super sea. Now they have pitted a large warship of unknown design against us. Jesus. Fight a warship? Uh, let's see, where's the closest one? I guess it's her. Hopefully, get down there in time. I hope I don't end up having to fight some huge battleship. I'm still sitting here with Corvettes. And sometimes this game does stupid stuff like that. Like, how could they possibly have <laughs> battleships uh, when I don't even have it? It's supposed to be coming from my military. Oh, negative four. What the hell? Oh, I guess it makes sense. They went, these clerks left again. Amenities go down. The clerks became cook, uh, metallurgists and artisans. Up here, we're probably going to need to make another line soon. Probably need to put that in the community. Let's let the clerk build a couple more before we do that. Now you think with all these stations I keep collecting, I would have more than enough minerals. <laughs> no, it all feeds in. Okay, good. Uh, so now I've got this observation post. Uh, so this is to create something called a situation. And again, this is just another little element, another dimension to the game. Uh, you can make choices as to what you want to do with this. Uh, favor insights. We are investing more in gaining insights at the cost of our observation missions. So this one is kind of in the middle, I suppose. And then this one produces more research. I think that's what that means. So I think the insights are way better because these are unique technologies. You can't get them any other way. They tend to be awesome. So that's what I'm going to do.
reduces negative 50%. So in order to produce, let's produce Recon pass completed. Not telling us. Yeah, and then we can decide if we want to be aggressive with our observations, or passive, cloaked or not. We don't have cloaking. We can even fragmented nation state. Yeah, you can reveal your presence to them. And there they are. So again, I think that's a really cool little thing to play with. It's fun to think about. Too far away. There's plenty of stuff close to me. Let's see, so, yeah, I could use a fourth ship to start going in that direction. Construction complete. Excellent. <laughs> I love to start collecting dark matter because, man, when you need that, you need a ton of it. I think I want to move here. That'll be a nice third planet for me. Wait, where's my fleet? Oh, I'm just sitting here. I need this guy sitting here for some reason. Bring him back to base and get that docking ship, dock ship on us. As we can, we need to make a colony ship. Construction complete. Pick up another three engineering, three. Yeah. Everything seems like it's going well till the AI shows up. Man, I can't believe how time flies when we're playing this too. It's crazy. And I've sat down with this game before thinking, I'm just gonna play a little bit in 30 minutes. Until supper's ready, until I need <laughs> supper time. And then it's like you know, midnight and I'm starving to death. Oh, I'm still just like, oh, I gotta, I gotta see this. this Recon thing. pass yeah. completed. Exotic gases. This is another one of these special resources. And those are, yeah, they're really good for, uh, you can speed up your ships with this, or you can make shields. Shields powder. A lot of uh, upgrades for buildings require that. But just all around highly useful thing. We need the technology to start harvesting it. Oh, the Grand Marshal. Yet another counselor trait. Awesome. Oh, Sydney. Sydney, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> you don't. don't like okay, we got more on the great assignments. After sifting through the debris left by the strange cultist warship, warship, I just believe that they have divine source of the ships. Driving this from a log file mentions some kind of abandoned alien shipyard discovered by the cultist ship's wing Venev. They've been using the automated shipyard to reinforce their numbers, and now they're producing new ships from alien templates. Found within the station's memory banks. So do we know where this is? Okay, so we can make her even better at archaeology, or we can start thinking about when we're done with our surveys. She might want to govern somewhere. Yeah, just go ahead and dedicate her. Should be like our sole archaeologist. We've only got the two. Hopefully, we find some more archaeology sites. And we don't even have any factions yet. It's a political game. <laughs> All this other stuff, but there's 
lots more we haven't even touched on yet. Unfortunately, though, I can't just make this video infinitely long, so. Battle debris secured. We'll have to stop here eventually. We'll probably go another. Let's go another half hour. Let's see what that system such right there. I forget what that's flashing for. Oh, this is a beautiful system here. That's gonna be excellent later. Let's go ahead and get that colony ship started. Construction complete. Yeah, this is all nice. I like having these planets close by because again, I can put if this pop up the trade value. Now you see this one, it's a good example compared to the other ones, because you'll notice it's only got two mines, one of those is blocked, only a few generators places, only five agriculture districts. You can see the difference, at least with the agriculture. So when you're thinking about where do I want to put my agriculture, it's pretty obvious which one's a better choice. Hey, do I have anything else served at this point? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this is not going to help me out at all right now. I will need it to get there. I think the, the floor engineering is probably more useful in the short term. Let's go there. I'm glad I got at least one dark matter <laughs> deposit near me, though. It's a lot later in the game, but... There will come a point where you need that. It's one of the great things, I think, what makes this game so replayable. Because there's so much stuff you don't know. The first few times you play it, why is that important? Or what does that do? Construction complete. So you almost have to play through several times before you can really develop any sense of what it makes sense to, to do. Colony ships. I wish I had a little bit more. Do I have a counselor with the? I thought I picked one that gave me a faster ship construction. Maybe I'll skip that one. But yeah, that's one of the counselor traits you can get is speed up ship production. It doesn't make such a big difference at this point. But when you start to get into the battleships and cruisers and things that take a long time, or titans. <laughs> Uh, even a 5% boost is huge, and it could be months or even years. Okay. Oh, this is working out pretty well. <laughs> Maybe they felt sorry taking away my head of research, so it'd be kind of nice. Yeah, well, see, he's stuck it out, man. It'll be okay. Recon pass completed. Could run up there, but I lose all that travel time, so let's just go look around here. <coughs> Seven months until I get another tradition, and that'll give me another sign. Just thinking ahead, thinking three or four moves ahead. Anomaly found. Debris field. Possible points of interest within the dense debris field. Yeah, left all that debris there. There's one thing I like. I'm getting kind of lucky with this game because I haven't run into the AI yet. But I really like it when you have a lengthy period before you run into them. Well, because once you run into the, all the aliens, it doesn't make so much sense. Why should you be so excited that you found signs of alien life? <laughs> We're talking to an alien. Oh, here's the political dimension. Yeah, so you usually get a couple of these at the start, and then depending on what happens later, you get more. And on the positive side, uh, they can give you unity. So you see here, this is giving you eight, this is giving you three. On the negative, though, you will see they're they're trying to push you to do certain things. Please. 
So this one's only 65% approving. So why do they not like? They think I need more ships, bigger fleets. That <laughs> sounds good to me too. <laughs> so they like my ethic, they like the we got somebody on the council with their militarist and what's this one? I see two there, come on, what's that one? There's another one that's not showing up. Well, I guess they're both militarist. This one's uh what does that symbol mean though? Mm -hmm. Authoritarian. They're authoritarian and uh, militarist. And these guys want me to switch my protocols to aggressive. You don't want to do that, trust me, <laughs> unless you are truly badass. Because <laughs> you, uh, if you treat the, when you start joining into the aliens, if you act like a real you know what, they will attack you almost instantly. And you'll probably be wiped out, or at least have to just drop everything else and try to deal with it. So, again, I like to be kind of neutral towards it, at least until I can get my dug center. There, technologies come in. That's one of the negatives, though. The more you expand, the more time this stuff will take. Recon pass completed. This empire size will start to creep up. So as long as it's below 100, I don't got nothing to worry about. But as soon as it starts going over that, then we'll see technology costs go up, uh, unity costs for traditions to go up. Everything will get more expensive. Okay, let's maybe here first, and then there next. Now let's just go here first. Two ahead of skis. So for you, let's go for the next one. You can see how that influence, even after that big haul I got earlier, I'm already down now. So I won't be able to build any more outposts for a while until this creeps back up. Okay, so I get more turn of this. Another scientist and better schools. <clears throat> Remember, I don't know if I got enough. I got a science ship. Excellent. Of course, this will have, have to wait till this gets to 100. Uh, now, one, I would put an official on this planet just to start leveling up. Considering my unity is not very good. Oh, look at this. See these anomalies? This one gave me 40 influence. Talk about timely. That was perfect timing. Yeah, that's no question. Keep that pop growth popping. So now he's got Fertility Preacher level 2. Pop growth speed 5%. And then food from jobs 15%. I think it was three or four. So, makes a difference. The faster you can grow, I mean, everything else is going to come from that. Okay. This planet. You know, this one doesn't have a whole lot of districts. <clears throat> so, a planet like that might be good for. Either just dedicated to trade or construction complete unification or unity production. And again, since we've got so few planets, you probably don't want to specialize too much at this point. You can always do that later. That's what I'll probably end up doing here. Because I'm going to need some mines. Once all these metallurgists and artisans start working, they will eat up all those minerals. Construction complete. Okay, now. This was not all that useful to me, it's just two energy. I 
hate to waste my little bit of influence just to pick up two energy. And I got this one. If you notice, there's no way the AI can get to that one. So it's it's pretty safe. I don't have to worry about the AI coming and taking it. So I might look... This one's got seven energy and six minerals. I'm thinking that one. Also, at some point, I need to build another star base. So I can make... What I could do is make this one have... I can either go two trade hubs here and make another station to put some shipyards there. Move my ship production out of the map. Or I can construction make complete. trade hubs here. Since it is literally the middle of the empire. Either way, it would probably be okay. So like this spot here, I need one, two, three, four. So if I change that to a trade hub, I get only one extra range. So it wouldn't help me at this point. But once I upgrade the station. And if you do it right, you're really strategic about where you place these things. You know, around gateways and wormholes and things. You can try to minimize the pirate impact. And eventually you'll be able to build uh, gateways yourself. Which basically, instead of having to go plot to plot, you can just go through the gateway instantly to your planet or wherever you put another one. And that eliminates the pirate problem. <laughs> That's unfortunately a long ways away uh, from where we are now. Okay. So I know I'm not going to be able to get to this trip. Again, it's locked out. The AI won't be able to come over and take it. So this might be a good spot to move. Good amount of science. Decent everything. Let's go ahead and move there. But I don't have the unity to do anything. Or the influence right now. So unfortunately we're gonna to get to that point where we just have to sit and wait. So we got a yet another one of these places with observation posts. Oh so glad that's locked too. Well I'm getting some really good really good options here. As a matter of fact might Go ahead. Anomaly found. Build there, because that those, uh, those insights are amazing. One more month to get another research upgrade. Anomaly found. I found a lot of these. Wreckage of an archaic spaceship with an unusual design. I'm not quite sure how its propulsion system is. Maybe that'll give me a new booster. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Okay, even more research coming in from our stations. Ah, now we get yet another difficult choice. So you see that research alternatives is picked up. Now we get more options. So sometimes I go with this one because it's only going to be useful now. Later in the game, there won't be anything to survey. So it's kind of a now or never type deal with that. It's 25% faster. You know, it could make a big difference. I could have a lot more stuff surveyed before the AI shows up. Man, this other stuff is all good stuff. But I guess we'll pick this one. Just, again, use it or lose it. Another science ship. So, yep, we can hire another scientist. We've got another one here with the counselor trait, but let's just see. So this one is, <laughs> I wonder, you know, do I think this one's going to die too? Hopefully not. But do I need another archaeology? Not really. I don't really want more than one person doing archaeology. So I guess we'll pick this one. It's kind of useless to me, but it's a little insurance in case our other person, other scientists die. Let's, let's have you look over here. Now I've really got the survey going. <coughs> Four ships. 
Later what I can do, I'm going to have uh, planets that are dedicated strictly to technology and research. And those uh, scientists, when they run out of survey work or archaeology work or whatever, I can have them sit, sit out as governors. Our pioneers have made planet fall. Huge boost to technology doing that. Anomaly found. Here. I should probably I'm trying to think if I got another urgent need for any alloys. I should be pretty good for a while, I think. Go ahead and reinforce him. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot more than this. Using silent drones and tractor beams, we were able to successfully collect, analyze, and study unsuspecting deary individuals and return them to their dwellings. <laughs> X-Files. From the other side of the X Files. Unfortunately, the tractor beams had an unexpected effect. After being returned, the specimens started suffering from boils, rashes, and sneezing. I wonder if this has happened to me before. <laughs> Skin dissolving illness. Autopsies would doubtlessly reveal proof of external tampering. Alright, so we get three choices re kidnap the specimens to study the effects of the beams. And if we do that, we get some research, increase awareness by 10, decrease tractor power, and low for a while. So really nothing stats time. Or increase tractor beam power and test them on the natives. Wow, we get blue lasers 100% if we do that option. But one of the population dies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta have them lasers, man. Sorry, buddy. Uh, we found the wreckage of the archaic of an archaic spaceship. Really Instead of using propulsion similar to that of modern ships, the craft relied on water seals. That's a summer seal. Okay, so now we've got a laser ship. I thought it said I got 100%. What happened? I think that sash should get 100% blue lasers. Oh, maybe it takes a little while. Uh, for them to do the... Uh, whatever they were doing. Strength of small places. Having probed the frozen landscapes, we think we've stuck something big. Absorb solar energy with surprising efficiency. Huh. Okay, so they found this, these sort of solar cell creatures, I suppose. We can either try to figure out how to use it to improve energy production, or maybe we can make some type of laser or power source. Tough call. I guess we'll go with energy production. Pretty nice to have a benefit to that. Never have enough money. <laughs> I guess you can have so much you overflow the resource silos. You can always make more silos. All right. So this is another empire-wide boost. So all everywhere in my empire, we get five percent more energy credits for jobs. That's awesome. System reconnaissance completed. Not really well. Consider I'm on captain level difficulty, but <laughs> I'm guessing the computer already has battleships and titans by right now. That would be so disheartening if the computer shows up and you're just way, way ahead of me. I guess at some point I do need Yeah, I need to build something else. Okay. Enough clerks. Oh. What to make? Well, I was just talking about research, but. 
We'll take another four consumer goods away. It's probably worth it. Or I could double down on administrative offices. Maybe one of each to split the difference. Love research. Need to. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. <coughs> Game over. System reconnaissance first completed. First contact with mysterious aliens in the advanced systems. Take a look at them. Probably a science ship at this point. I don't see any. I don't see any stations or anything, so it's probably an explorer. That means there's aliens over there, so they're gonna be expanding rapidly. So first, we got to figure out how to contact them, and then we have to hope they're not absolute, you know what. And they might be this. this I think they're called fanatical purifiers. And they could just start going and battle with us immediately. Yeah. So an interesting choice will be coming up soon about how we want to treat them. And I've tried to be, I've tried to pick the aggressive options, I'll be hostile right away. It just always bites me. What, the, what is going on? I thought it was way in the middle of the galaxy. So. Okay, well, we found the, uh, line. New sit rep. Let's research that. What? I don't know why it was saying it was way out in the middle of the galaxy. Construction complete. Yeah, but that was that original, that was our sister arc ship. On the lost lobby. So we'll get some good stuff. Right? About that. I, I won't spoil the sport, uh, the story. <laughs> I, should, I mean, I should stop this video. I'm getting just getting tough to talk. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm not going to spoil the little story with the, the highest of them. Because I think it's kind of more fun to find that out. Oh, what happened? Well, I probably don't want to explore too much over in that area because that's where the computer is. Apparently. It could be something innocuous. You know, there are these, uh, they're not player civilizations. And, just kind of different people. Uh, I don't know what to call them, but they're not civilizations. So if it's one of them, then I'm fine. It's probably... I bet that was an explorer ship. So they got their scouts out too, trying to find land to expand. The computer just seems to have infinite influence. Infinite... <laughs> I guess Science I division report success. Oh, there we go. Get an extra counselor. So I can either get a Lord High Admiral, which this has to be a commander. Actually, both of these have to be a commander. So I don't know why anybody would pick this second one. The first one, you get plus 50 ship starting experience and naval capacity. The other one only gives you naval capacity. So why would you pick that? Unless you don't get the cool hat. <laughs> pick this. Now, the problem with this is I'd have to hire another commander. Yeah, we don't have enough influence right now, anyway. Or enough uh, unity. But I don't have enough fleets to really do anything with them, so they're just going to be wasting, uh, wasting away. I can make them a governor somewhere, but that's about it. There's a downside to making a commander a governor. So this will give us even more survey speed. Uh, here well. So let's go another 10 minutes. <laughs> What's that? Oh, what? 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 oh, I got my fleet command one. I didn't even see that pop up. Alright, this one will give me some edicts. Uh, yeah, these cost money, but they're really powerful. I don't really have enough money coming in to use them, but that's what we're thinking about. I talked about that one before. 
Uh, this one just makes your soldiers you know that you have on planets more effective, which grow and holds able capacity. And it's also good if you're getting attacked a lot. And if, if you need defense armies at this point, you're probably screwed. Or we can go to this fourth option here. Now you might think I don't need those hydroponic farms, but I'm pretty sure this is the one that leads to the uh, <clears throat> nutritional edict, which is essential. Uh, this one's really good too. Though. I think we'll go with that one because the sooner I can get that nutritional plenitude, the better. Uh, I still don't really have enough naval capacity to take full advantage of that. We will soon enough. I need to get that. Special project complete. Oh. Yeah, just sign out so you can see it. Okay, okay on that. <laughs> so just don't look at that. Oh, I need... Wow, a thousand? Also level five. Wow, I didn't know you could... We could hire really experienced commanders right out the gate. We need a ton of uh, unity. We still don't have enough unity. I guess it's another, another month or two. Uh, I just got that empty seat just sitting there. Okay. So that'll be a pretty good system. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Oh, I got the coil gun! <laughs> It's all over now. That's yeah, so some more good choices. This one, get the even better mines. That's probably the one to pick. But this one down here is extremely good because this leads to robots. You can make robots and they're basically a second population for you. So you can make your humans and robots at the same time fill up these planets faster. Now they start off kind of sucky, but of course you can improve it over time. Uh, and this is one of those that doesn't pop up when you need it to, so it sucks if I pick if I don't pick it and never see it again. <laughs> or after a long period finally see it. Uh, this is really good if you want mineral purification is really good if you want most of your mining to be on planets. So eventually we're gonna have these mining planets where there's just nothing but mines. And this basically doubles and then later uh, triples the amount of minerals you're able to get from those planets. So very, very useful. Uh, but this one, I think, is probably the best all-around option at this point. Because most of our stuff's going to be coming from stations. Uh, at least at this point. I bet if we looked over here. Well, it's about half and half. So we get 37 from stations, so we get 10% more. So not a huge benefit right away, but we're going to have a lot of systems. <laughs> so, that's a lot. It's, it's, it's more than it sounds at the moment. Is that a good stopping point? Because this game never stops. <laughs> I'll tell you, well, let's get another counselor to call it. I should, I should be able to do that in five minutes. Oh, I gotta pick something for this place. Oh, I already filled up. Okay, so this is where it starts to get. <laughs> I've been saying that to me too. But you see, I've only got one house left. Or one, uh, housing. So if I put a building here, like let's say I put a, maybe I want more metal, so I put this alloy place here. I'd probably be more likely to put the civilian here. So this gives you two artisan jobs, right? But then you're going to run out of housing. So I might want to put, I could just put another industrial district down, uh, but this is going to give me uh, two housing, but it's also two more jobs. So I'm just kind of kicking the can down the road in terms of having enough housing. I could uh, just keep doing that though, because when I can upgrade that, it's going to be a while, but uh, when I'm able to upgrade this, this will give me five housing. I think that one only gives me three. So if you play it just right, <laughs> uh, you could do that, or you could just put another city district down. This will give you, we've been over this. <laughs> <laughs> a clerk job, a building slot, and five housing. I think the smart thing for me to do at this point, though, is just keep rolling. Just keep rolling and build that when we need it. This isn't going to be super helpful yet. Uh, 
when I up when you get the upgraded version of this building, it will let you uh, the artisans will put out one more uh, than they do now. So basically, it's a, you got a forceful fire. And as present state, it's not all that helpful. So let's just keep going with the districts. Let's see, get 350. Oh, 344. Come on. You see, like every few seconds, there's something interesting to do. The micromanagement you can do in this game. I kind of wonder why I didn't get my. Let's hire somebody for this position. Now, should I wait for the level five? Thousand. That would take a long time. Oh, I can't. Oh, this guy really stinks. So he could never be a good governor. <laughs> this guy, what is his? So he's really good as a commander of a fleet. But man, trade value, he'd be a terrible governor. But it's not going to affect his counselor. Kind of sucks that he doesn't have any counselor skills. We're done anyway. Let's go ahead and hire him. Oh, still no. Look at this, no, uh, no traits that'll help him on the council. Anything here? Yeah, finally, one that helps. Logistic understanding. Okay, so we get a little bit better dock ship upkeep and army upkeep. Right, we haven't even got into that. <laughs> but if we ever try to invade a planet, uh, then you need to hire some troops. And then these have become fleets of their own. You have to be very protective. The computer loves to just pop up there where your fleets are, your transport ships, and kill your armies. It took, you know, 100 minerals and 90 turns to make. And these are just the basic troops. I mean, later on, you get more sophisticated ones that take even longer and more expensive. And believe me, uh, you might have a thousand unit army sitting out here somewhere, and the computer from just absolutely nowhere pops there. Huge fleet, kills them all. That is crummy feeling. Maybe even the general, if you have a general sitting on top of them, to boot. So hopefully you don't experience that pain. But it can happen. So just make sure you're very careful where you move those transports to. All right. I think this is a pretty good stop, stopping point. Oh! What am I talking about? We haven't even... We want this guy. Oh, it already. No. So remember, we've got coil guns now. But see, the problem is now we don't have enough power. So, easy fix would be to do this and just swap out the shield for some armor. It's a little bit less protected, but we've got a lot better weapons here. Now, let's see. Damage. So this does 10.99 versus 6.98 on these primitive lasers. So pretty nice improvement. So that is that. <laughs> okay, let me stop this. I'll just briefly show you my uh, my other game so you can get a sense of just how sophisticated this gets. <laughs> Let's see, I think it's this one. That one. That's that one. <laughs> Wait till you see this. <clears throat> so this is a huge map, and this isn't even one. I'm probably about maybe 60% done. And this was on the level below the uh, captain level. Alright, so here, it's here 2386. <clears throat> and I picked something called a uh, become the Crisis, which is one of my favorite Ascension perks. <laughs> yeah, so eventually you'll be picking these up. You know, once you complete a tree, you can pick one of these. And there's one, I don't know if I'd recommend this to you, but it's, uh, I guess they call it Galact Galactic Nemesis now. It used to be called Become the Crisis. But you basically become the bad guy. And there's a couple ways to play it. Uh, one is to try to build. I won't, I won't spoil the story for you. It's kind of a little story roleplay thing you can do. 
uh, in the game that way. Or you can just take advantage of all the technologies that gives you just to conquer all the other computer players, which is the way I like to play. But if you don't do that, now let me just walk through some of this quickly with you. So one of the problems is, uh, if you want to conquer the universe, instead of trying to do some kind of uh, just wait out the clock kind of victory, uh, you got some options. Uh, one is the, just to do really, I guess it's, let me talk about it. <laughs> so one thing you can do is, you, instead of conquering uh, one of your neighbors, you can try to vassalize them, you know, which you, they basically become uh, a helper, I suppose. And there's different kinds of vassals, there's ways to specialize them. Uh, and then eventually you can integrate them into your empire just by using influence. The problems with that is you have to juggle, make sure they're happy, keep them satisfied, or they'll revolt. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't be very good for you. But again, influence is so hard to get in this game. I mean, if you're having to spend massive amounts of influence to integrate and to negotiate their you know, vassal agreements and stuff, it's just tedious. I don't, I don't like that too much. Some people, I guess, really enjoy having the vassal tributes and stuff. Not really what, what I like to do. Uh, the other method would be just to conquer, and then you can make these claims. So I don't know if I'll be able to do it with this. I'll try to show you what this is. Yeah. So basically what this, let's say I wanted to conquer this guy. I could, I don't have any influence. <laughs> but you can see, if I had 88, I could put a claim on these planets, and then I could declare war on him. And then one of the uh, options would be conquer. So then if I win the war, then all the systems of, of his that are claimed, I get to keep. So that's, that's the way to do it. But again, it requires massive amounts of influence. Even if you got all the good stuff trying to pump up your influence at time, or time consuming. So ways around those two options uh, one is this one I've been telling you about, the Galactic Nemesis. So you become the bad guy, you get some special stuff you can do, some special ships. Uh, it's just a lot of cool stuff uh, that you can explore with this. Uh, but at some point, again, I don't really want to cover your ears if you want no spoilers for about a second. <laughs> but the, uh, you get far enough along with this and the, all the AIs will go to war. So you have to fight everybody. So it's kind of dangerous, you really have to be, you don't want to rush through this. Make sure that you got lots of fleets and really well equipped not to deal with it. Uh, but anyway, it's kind of fun. And then there's this, you could play it another way where instead of conquering all the bad guys, you just you try to build a certain thing. Uh, just defeat, <laughs> achieve victory, quote unquote, that way. Uh, another option is this thing called the Colossus Project. Uh, so this one is a little bit nicer, I think, than the uh, one I was just showing you. You basically make this giant Death Star-like ship, uh, and then that'll give you the option called Total War, and then you can just go to war without having to do the whole claims and uh, you know deal with all that influence-related stuff. So this is probably the my favorite option. It's a good way to conquer people without having to spend massive amounts of influence and not have the whole universe turn against you. <laughs> uh, at least that doesn't really happen. Plus, this is a pretty nice ship. I don't ever use this ship. Uh, I just build it, park it in my home base. And, you know, I don't actually do this planet killer stuff. But, you know, it could be something you might look into. I thought there was yet another way to do it. I think that's what I typically do. I'm pretty sure I'm missing something. But anyway. So yeah, look at think about having to manage all these planets. <laughs> I mean, look at these fleets. You know, this is again only 2386. I think the game. Oh, uh, I think the game goes all the way to. Let's, what is it? Yeah, 2500. So if you make it to 2500 and you're ranked number one, you win. It's kind of waiting out the clock. It's what a lot of people do. Uh, a lot of people actually what they'll do is just when they get to the point uh, where they've been through the mid-game, there's a mid-game crisis that happens, there's an in-game crisis that happens. So what a lot of people do, if they survive those two things, they just call it quits. Uh, some people, if they feel like they got a big enough advantage, like here, I'm way ahead. Actually, I'm not too far ahead. 
think these are the Fallen Empires, though. So the nearest player, the Fallen Empires are basically these super ancient civilizations that have amazing technology, uh, but they're not really player civs. But the closest player is this Chop, chop Potion, so you can see I'm even <laughs> about three times as powerful. So I could just say, you know, I'm satisfied, I'm going to win, uh, I'm going to quit here, and not go through the uh, tedium, if you want to look at it that way, conquer all these other systems here. I don't mind it. To me, it's almost kind of like the little bubbles in a bubble wrap. <laughs> you know, take, take a planet, take a system, figure out how to fix it, because the AI typically sucks with their planet construction. This is almost like random stuff they put on their planets. Uh, so you can tinker around with them, I think, yeah, for this one, it's a little bit uh, backwards. Yeah, here's one of those insights you get from studying the uh, primitive civilizations. Empire size from districts, 30%. So you could only get this by putting those observation posts up. And you can see that's just a massive, cool empire modifier. So this is what I'm saying. If you can make an observation post, definitely do that. Have I covered... Obviously, I haven't covered everything we could talk about in this game. I mean, look at this. Like, uh, instead of doing the cybernetics trees or the, uh, the synth tree, I decided to specialize in genetics. Just because it's something I hadn't really done too much with. And so what that lets you do, you can make these clone bats, which is kind of cool. But you can get in here species. Uh, let's think about this one. So I can actually take some of their traits off and put some other ones on. So like this guy has their weak, so they do less resource output. So I'll take that away. I don't really care about this one. I could take it away. Take it away, though, I'll lose. You kind of want a at least one negative trait, because <clears throat> then you could have more positive traits to put on. So. You might find the least offensive negative trait. <laughs> like maybe you don't care if they grow fast. Usually there's at least one, it's, it's okay. Uh, like these, I don't want any leaders of this species. So I can just say, yeah, okay. Your leaders suck, but I'm not gonna have any leaders anyway. I'll take that one away. And so then I could figure out what I would like to have instead. And this one's the auto modding stuff is really cool. And so what this does is, uh, depending on what they're what work they're doing, they will get uh, a special trait. I think we can hover over this and see what it does. So let's say this guy was a a farmer. Well, now they're doing 50% more farms. So that's really nice. Instead of a trait like this, it's kind of locked in, so everybody has it, even if they're not doing uh, any research. So you could take those off and try to just do more stuff that would be useful for no matter what he's doing. So that'd be one way to approach it. Uh, an even more micromanaging way to approach this would be to say, well, I know I want this. These guys will. I want a, people that are really good at research. It's the only thing I want them to do. So let's see, let's do all the research. <laughs> uh, where's the other ones? I thought there was more research. What's the other research options? Did get them all? I thought there was more research. Engineering. <clears throat> okay, there's. Oh, I guess you can only pick one of those. Not compatible. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> so what's the best possible scientist I could make? Okay, so this is erudite, so that takes four. Okay, so that gives you 20%. That's good. And I think, yeah, I, must, I guess it locks this one out. So I could pick that. Either specialize in one of these. I guess we could do that. Wait, if there's anything else here that would help a scientist. I think 
that's all of them. And these aren't even all traits, by the way. There's a lot of other ones you can get through various means. Okay, so let's pick that. I guess we still got enough to put the auto mod on. So if he's... If these guys are scientists. Do any of these have anything to do with it? Yeah, and so there's another 10% for that. So that's 20%, 30%. 35% in engineering. And then we still got another trait we can stick on. Maybe make them conformist, sure. Or I want to see if there's anything that has to do with just community, housing, pop speed, damage. He can even eat people. <laughs> and then goods upkeep. You know, since the, the <coughs> Some of these aren't all all that great, but uh, they're better than a negative trait for sure. Good stick another. I don't think that's gonna do us any good. Alright, so what we could do is create a template with all that on it, and then say apply the template, and then find where our tech worlds are. Wait, not have any of these guys on tech worlds. So they have, oh, there's a tech world. What am, I, what am I talking about? So I go in here and say, okay, all these tech worlds. That's not fun. <coughs> apply the template. So basically, on those worlds, you'd have these super scientists. Uh, you know, these guys on those worlds would be super scientists. Uh, but then you might say, you know, go through all this again, but say, now I want to make somebody who's really good at mining, really good at whatever the case may be. So you could really micromanage the heck out of this. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. When you conquer a planet, what I like to do is have a general, where I like to make these admirals. I like to get the traits where they're good with your ship. Uh, but they also have some skills with uh, armies. So they all do by default, but if you pick your traits right, you can sort of make somebody who's good as an admiral, good as a general. But you can always switch them out. See, like when I'm ready to. Oh, look at this son of a gun. Oh, it's just. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's tricky when you're trying to reinforce things. Stuff can happen. But anyway, my point. <laughs> you know, let's say my fleet was here ready to attack. I could take her out of the ship. Take her off the fleet, put her into into the transport fleet. I'm attack the planet and switch back. Uh, so that's good to know in case you think, oh, I don't have enough. You know, I'm way past my leader cap. I need admirals and and uh, generals, people to do both. Or I guess you could just have one or two admirals and just it doesn't matter how far away they are. It's almost kind of a cheesy mechanic, but you know, like I could move a general from here all the way up to here somewhere instantly, no sort of penalty. With that so it doesn't feel very good <laughs> it's like that doesn't make sense you know why can't you just instantly zap across the universe but, eh. yeah, so there you go one of the best games ever made in my opinion just so much to it so many technologies things you can make just things to think about different ways to approach stuff different kinds of situations that can arise. Uh, no two games are the same. You know, there's always something that will keep you awake at night thinking about, oh, what if I do this? <laughs> what if I come back and try that? You know, what, what about this? It, just every time you think you've seen it all, you know, there'll be some new thing you, you've never even seen before. Like, you're digging in here and like, uh, government and you're like, well, what is what does that do? I never noticed that before. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, yeah, here. And you know, you could reform the government. You have all these different sorts of civics you could play with. Yeah, so that's cool, and they all do fun stuff. It, it totally changed the way you play the game, or at least the, the strategy for that. Now, let me show you what I was talking about with these pirates. So like you see here, 
have these stations and in between they have to connect to your home base which is way up here uh, to do the trade so all along the route here there's pirates and you can look at the math there so I got this under control I built some stations around it with a bunch of hangers I have to tamp it down plus I have all these police on patrol just going back and forth trying to tamp down the pirates uh, that's a real pain it's much better if you can take advantage of these wormholes like here or gateways even better and the gateways all connect to other gateways uh, so once you get one of these uh, then you can stack your uh, <coughs> stack all your trade hubs and then that'll all the trade from eight systems around if you make sure there's no other stations within that range uh, they'll all come to that one spot boom we can get all that trade without any piracy it's a beautiful beautiful thing when you get that working out unfortunately i don't really have any cool relics uh, to show you with this one here's just one i found uh, the cyber explorer forge uh, so this lets me make these awesome awesome armies like my capital planet and then it takes there's a cooldown on the, what they call the triumph uh, but every so often i'll be able to activate this and i get eight thousand alloys this one's all right i mean i like being able to create the warform armies but man i've had like nine or ten of these relics before just didn't have any luck this this game here and it's something they introduced in one of the dlcs and you'll notice here and there there'll be these little tears Let's see if i can find one there's one so kind of like with archaeology you'll find these little tears and you can send a national explorer astral rift explorer into these and then the little stories play out a lot of them are really funny and some are just weird but it's all well written all interesting things you know even the silly stuff is you know it looks like somebody pretty smart came up with it you know they make you laugh or be intrigued by it so it's always worth uh stopping to read the you know, what's going on you know sometimes you're in the middle of a battle you're like oh i don't want to stop and have to read this <laughs> this archaeological development but you really should you can always go back to the battle later you can pause it read it and come back but there you go you know i don't feel like i really showed you a lot of the what's actually neat about the uh, <laughs> uh the, the dlc the machines but one of the problems they had in the early before they came out with that expansion was there was a couple of what they call ascension pads, I think they call those. So for this, for mine, uh, on this one, I picked with the genetics, but it's kind of a dumb thing if I wanted to show you the, I wasn't really playing this this game here to show you that. Matter of fact, let me just go to another game here because I can show you what that looks like. It was in the one right before this. I think this one I, I picked the synth tree. But anyway, uh, they had this other. The genetics has been there before. They also had the. Oh no, this is it. Wait, what am I looking at? Oh, this is some game I <laughs> just started and abandoned. Now, but anyway, the cybernetics tree, essential tree, wasn't very interesting. I think that's enough systems. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> so they really pumped those up, made them a lot more interesting to play. Cybernetics and the synth tree. So this one, I believe, was the synth. Let me see. Yeah, this was a large map instead of a huge, but <laughs> still pretty massive. Just make sure. I... Yeah, this is the synth tree. Uh, so it was really interesting, the options. This is the one again where you become robots. So if I look at my species here. Everybody's a robot. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting uh, story elements to go with this, you know, on your path to becoming a robot. A lot of cool advantages they get as robots, but you know, when you get to them, the only way to make more is if you build these uh, robot buildings so they can no longer you know, reproduce 
traditional way, let's say. So again, you might end up with lots of other species. But one of the things you can do is assimilate them. And so that's what happened here. Uh, at one point of the game, I decided I was just going to free everybody and have no slavery. <laughs> and that, for some reason, when I did that, they all switched into assimilation mode. So they're basically all becoming robots. So I guess that solves. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, there's also that cyborg tree. I did that earlier, too, and had a lot of fun with that, with cybernetics. So, uh, anyway, there's a lot to see uh, to this game. I think if you're going to play it, I'd go ahead and just buy all the expansions. They're all fun. I don't know why you'd want to limit yourself in any way. Uh, but I'm going to stop it here. i got to limit my <laughs> time. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you play Stellaris, I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you got into the modding community, you know, I understand there's tons and tons of mods. You can make this look like Star Trek. Probably other ones. I guess we could take a look. At this. I wonder if we can look at the mods from here. I wonder how you get to the mods. I haven't really played around with that at all. Well, I'm not going to make this video 100 hours long. If you would like to chime in, talk about mods, please do so in the comments. But I'm going to stop it here. Total no-brainer to buy this game. One of the best games I've ever played. Love it. A thousand hours. Just still love it. I don't know how you go wrong with this. I just think they've done a fantastic job. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video. And I'll see you. <laughs> if I can stop playing Stellaris, <laughs> I'll see you next time. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Uh, should be back really soon. Got an interview coming up with the developer of a Sovereign Syndicate. And also, we'll be talking to Jordan Mechner soon. You know, I had that set up earlier, but we had to postpone it, uh, sadly. But that, that's back on the calendar. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully, has some really great interviews coming up for you, uh, as well as some more gameplay uh, reviews, let's plays, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one thing I don't have to wonder what to call is you. If you support this show, you are awesome, and therefore you are a ratron. So thank you very, very much for supporting this show, keeping the episodes coming. You know, we've really been having a hard time. Uh, Matt Bradley, Shurgi, and I, I mean, what's the, we're trying as hard as we can to put out the best possible uh, content for you, get the best interviews. I mean, we're working. Uh, you'd be surprised how hard it is to track down some of these folks, get them on the show, get prepped and everything. Uh, so I really appreciate the help. Uh, you guys who are liking the videos, reviewing, uh, subscribing, but more importantly, going to that link on the show notes to the Patreon page and throwing a buck uh, into the tip jar really makes a huge difference. Really need your help, folks. Uh, as a way to kind of stimulate some uh, more patronage, <laughs> I've taken to posting some bonus content over there. Uh, for example, for this video, I plan to put another hour of uh, content from my later game I was showing you there briefly at the end, uh, just exclusively for the Patreon folks. Uh, but don't forget, you also get access to a really cool Discord channel and you know, <laughs> uh, insider access. Just, there's really a lot of benefits. You'll like the show more and you'll keep it on, the, uh, on YouTube and well, I guess as well as Patreon. So thank you so much for supporting the show. If you haven't already, uh, please go to the link, uh, go to Patreon, sign up. It only takes a few minutes and you're really going to be happy that you did Okay. All right, what about that news from the Matt King? Well, Miko writes in about Greedfall 2, uh, The Dying World. Uh, it's got a release date announcement now, September 24th. Uh, now, the original game came out in 2019, developed by Spiders, a company out of Paris, France, and the world is inspired by 17th century European exploration and colonialism. And they call this a, a mid-budget <laughs> game, so I guess it's not triple-A, it must be just a single-A. I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, I haven't played either, either one of these games, obviously. Well, obviously I haven't played the second one, I haven't played the first one either. Uh, if, if you think it's something I should look into, if you think I would like it, or you've got thoughts of your own about, about it, if you wouldn't mind sharing those, just go to that the comments uh, here on YouTube, let me know what you think, or, of course, on Discord. Uh, it looks good. You know, I just don't know too much about it, uh, but it's just based on this video. I think it's something I should learn more about. So thank you for that, Miko. 
Uh, and then second, there's quite a bit of a discussion over Discord about piranha bites. Also over at the RPG Codex, they've been talking about this. Uh, so you know those guys, they did the uh, Gothic series in Risen. I guess a couple other ones I'm less familiar with. Uh, anyway, they have closed down, so Piranha Bytes is gone. But on a positive note, the former lead employees... What is going on with my Google Doc? <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, the former lead employees, who are uh, Jennifer and Bjorn Pankratz, Pankratz... Is that really how you pronounce that? Pankratz? <laughs> if so, that's the best name I've ever heard for a developer. Uh, anyway, they founded a new studio they're calling Pithead Studio and plan to continue the business. And then uh, I like the way Punny puts this over Discord. I guess you can say a new company has been Bjorn. That's the, the kind of wit <laughs> you can expect to see over at the uh, Matt Chat Discord. Uh, and then finally, some sad news, rather sad news. Uh, so I had to do a little transition here from happy stuff to uh, sad stuff. Unfortunately, Richard Simmons, you probably know him, the fitness uh, guru, uh, really a guru with the gamification. If you remember, he, uh, way back before that was even a thing, uh, was creating products to kind of uh, make a game out of uh, fitness and health. Uh, Deal a meal, I think was the name of that. Uh, but anyway, I always kept on, I always liked uh, Richard Simmons. Uh, he's also from Louisiana, so we kind of have that. Uh, I just found him really entertaining, very positive, cheerful. Always made me laugh, basically, you know, whenever I saw him. would feel a little better. Uh, I think he's got, yeah, what's that series? He's got the uh, uh, Sweat into the Oldies. <laughs> yeah, so, so anyway, it's, it's a bit uh, sad, kind of an inspiration uh, to me. You know, always liked that, uh, uh, the energy uh, that he had, kind of envious of that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, sadly, he has passed away. Uh, they don't know what happened to him. And I guess it's still being investigated, but uh, anyway, just thought I would pass that on. Uh, best wishes to his family, and you know, if you're also a fan of his, uh, I know you're sad as well as I am about that. All right, what about that ale of the week? Well, what do we have here? What do we have? Ah, there we go. Uh, so I got two more of these uh, untitled arts left to try. Uh, this one is the American Gold. Now, I haven't been too happy with the other ones. I really like the Dark S'mores. <laughs> you know, that kind of blew it out of the water for me with the non-alcoholics. Uh, this one, though, well, it is called American Gold, so it seems kind of uh, patriotic, I suppose. Nice uh, can work, kind of red, white, and blue artwork by Stephanie Heyman. Of course, these folks are out of Wanakee, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's just a really pretty can on these. Anyway, let's open up American Gold, see what it's all about. Hopefully I like this better than the other two I've tried. You know, I'm, I'm just about done with this non-alcoholic uh, series we've had <laughs> going on the show lately. <laughs> uh, I'm just kind of fascinated by it. You know, I love uh, science and craft and to see what really brilliant people can do. I think, is it possible to make a non-alcoholic beer that tastes and, uh, you know, feels just like the real thing? And some of these have definitely come very, very close, if not actually succeeded in that. So this American Gold, nice uh, bubble action on it, nice head. You know, smells really good, just the right amount of hoppiness. I mean, this one actually smells really nice. I hope it tastes as good as it smells. Um, now go ahead and taste it here, and then I'll pour some of the drinking horn for you. Well, this one's got a good flavor to it. Uh, what is that? It's got an interesting aftertaste on this. A little bit citrusy, a little bit hoppy, uh, maybe a little bit uh, fruity, uh, I might say. A little bit of a Pilsner flavor. You know, this one is better. I actually kind of like this one. It's not, it's uh, quite a bit better than those other ones. Let me pour some here into the drinking horn for the real test. There we go. Yeah, this one I think is would be a perfect beer for that uh, post-workout <laughs> beverage. You've been mowing the grass, you come home, you want a beer, uh, but you don't want the alcohol. Yeah, this might hit the spot. Let me try some of this. Yeah, I gotta say this one is quite solid. I 
it does kind of taste, you know, maybe like a Budweiser, a Coors, you know, something like that. Uh, but uh, I'm not even really sure I could tell this was a non-alcoholic. I'm going to try it one more time, just really focus in on can I tell this is a non-alcoholic beer. You know, I don't think I could. <laughs> you know, uh, if I had a Coors in one hand and this in the other, I don't know if I could tell you uh, that this one was a non-alcoholic. Yeah, I think they've uh, succeeded with this one. Because I think, you know, as I said before, uh, when you're drinking a regular beer, there's a little bit of bite uh, from that alcohol. It doesn't really burn. You know, of course, it depends on how much alcohol we're talking about here. But let's just say a Coors, you know, there's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a bite, a little bit of a kick with that. And a lot of the non-alcoholics, uh, you miss that. You could tell, hey, something's missing here, right? It's kind of more watery uh, tasting, for lack of a better way to put that. And I said that to sort of compensate for that, you really want a little more hops, a little more citrus, you know, some kind of something in there uh, to provide that. You know, I thought maybe chili peppers might be a good solution to that problem. But, you know, whatever they've done here, uh, I think they succeeded. I think if you poured somebody a glass of this, didn't show them the can, they had no, no clue this was a non-alcoholic. Yeah, really good. Really good. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're judging the non-alcoholics based on how close they are taste-wise to the uh, real thing, I think this one nails it. So I'm quite, I'm quite a bit happier with this one. Uh, and if we're just talking non-alcoholic beers, I would probably go somewhere like a three, four out of five on it. And it's not my favorite style of beer. Uh, but for what it is, it's really tasty. And if we want to compare it to all beers, you know, I don't know, two out of five. <laughs> uh, but just if you want something kind of like a Coors, Budweiser, something along those lines, uh, but you want to support, you know, a smaller company and you like the artwork on the can, I don't know, uh, you should definitely check this out. The American Gold from Non-Alcoholic. Or that's the, <laughs> it's from Untitled Art. <laughs> uh, I guess Non-Alcoholic is just their, just on the can. I don't know if that's part of the name of the beer or what. All right, let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was uh, looking for quotes by great science fiction authors. And of course, one of those is named Isaac Asimov. You've probably read some of his, some of his books. He's got hundreds. You know, a lot of people don't know that he uh, wrote science fiction. He wrote the Foundation series, a lot of iRobot, a lot of uh, science fiction stuff. But he also wrote quite a bit of nonfiction. <laughs> Very prolific author, really. The, uh, the writing as a career, uh, you could do a lot worse than Isaac Asimov. Anyway, the quote uh, that I want to talk about, uh, or give you, goes something like this. No sensible decision can be made any longer without taking into account not only the world as it is, but the world as it will be. I'm pretty smart. So ponder on that, and I'll see you guys next time.